Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the uh, August 13th, 2019 meeting of the Hilton Conservation Commission. I had to think of a date. <laughs> <laughs> um, as a matter of formality, uh, we have two issues. They're not issues. They're just uh, points of reference for you. It's an open meeting, so we have a tape recording that is going to preserve the record. We invite everyone to speak, to ask questions, make comments, but please come forward and use a microphone because it's also on the, uh, the uh, local cable vision. Um, and the second point of uh, uh, formality is we introduce ourselves. Judith Darrell Kemp. And my name is John Kiernan. Hans Van Lingen. Gerard Burke. Alpha Doyle. And Steve Ivers, Conservation Commission member. Conservation agent, I'm sorry. Hello. <laughs> in another town here. That's right. <laughs> Uh, so, first on the agenda is a land donation to Ponset Valley Parkway, parcel A12-9, which is next to number 89, the Ponset Valley. Uh, is there anybody here to make a presentation on that? Uh, seeing no one, and I, almost, I, I didn't expect it, but I have a short letter I'd like to read for the public benefit, uh, dated July 11th, and it says, uh, I'm writing in regard to an unbuildable property that is owned by myself and three siblings. I have spoken with Bill Clark, Bob Bushway, and Jim McAuliffe to write to the Commission and request that the Conservation Commission consider accepting this parcel of land as a donation. Uh, it is our hope to give this land to the Trust and after decades discontinue paying property taxes. Uh, they identify the list and there's a, a map attached to it. There is no building on it. And is it up here? Yes. This is the, this is the area right here. Uh, it's open. Uh, our conservation agent, Steve Ivis, has indicated that it's, I don't know, 90% wetland? Something like that, um, yes. It's close to it. So it, essentially it's unbuildable. They'd like to give it to us. We are very much in favor of open space. However, I, I checked with town council today and, and uh, the town administrator and uh, one of the board of selectmen, the select board, and uh, I just wanted to make sure that we actually are in a position to make a recommendation for the town to accept the land, uh, but it's up to the select board to accept the conveyance. Um, is there anybody that has a question about this land or whether or not it is appropriate to accept the land as a donation? Keeping in mind that uh, if there is a consensus to accept it, then we will have to have a, a motion to recommend that the select board actually accept it on behalf of the town. Well, I noticed that on both sides of this parcel there are houses. So I was wondering if an alternative would be to ask the owners on either side if they wanted to purchase that. If we had it as our property for the town, ask them to purchase it, then we would have money instead of open land. That's just another possibility, I don't know. It looks like it's wet on both sides, according to this map that was included in our package. I assume the green is typically wet areas, so um, it could that is be correct. on both sides it's wet as well. Um, just another idea, John, another way of approaching it. I don't know if uh, owners and their, I think the siblings of uh, Charles Preddy, uh, and there are four of them that own the property, I assume that they would have explored that. Okay. And to the extent that uh, we're interested in open space, and I know this is going to sound crazy because you can take money and benefit the environment as well. But um, I, I suspect that within the purview of our charter as a conservation commission, uh, we should be looking at open space as opposed to dollars and cents. Well, I'm, you know, I would typically be totally in favor of that. I think the question then comes before us is who benefits from this open space? Is it open to the public? Are uh, there walking trails on it um, to get behind or, you know, I think it's to an what acre. extent or is it? I think it's one acre. It is. And it's on a parkway, so it's accessible. So it would be accessible, yeah. I mean, just another series of questions of how it might be used or whatever. However, Mr. Chairman, if I may tell, you, tell the uh, crowd that there's a stream that runs through it here and it runs all the way through it, and then it, then it comes onto the next property, and then goes underneath the Ponce Valley Parkway. And most of, there's, there's a little tiny bit of upland here and in the front, and then there's a little bit of upland literally at a toe of slope along the boundary, and that's the only upland, that's the only dry land 
Uh, more of it will be dry right now during August, but come another month when we get the September rains, it will all be wet. Uh, it's already conservation land that can't be built on, correct? In that sense, it's unbuildable lot. That's what the, the letter says from okay, the but, but the second thing us. is, is, it, is the Conservation Commission and or the town responsible for the maintenance yes. and upkeep of the property? Yes. What's the town? We own, we own there, the town owns a lot of land that's open space. Okay. The Conservation Commission actually holds the deed to okay. many parcels. Right. So we've, we've got land all over the place. Okay. Uh, like at the high school, uh, Guile Road, as you come in off of Canton Avenue, that's Conservation Commission land. Um, so it's not unusual for us. Um, I think John Cronin has been very good at doing an inventory. And uh, Steve, I don't know if you're aware of it, but I, I think that Kathy Bowen has a list that was compiled by oh, good. John Cronin as to where all of the deeded property is. We have a map also. Yes. Right. You're right, because actually we looked at it for the uh, uh, Planning Commission. That's correct. Uh, well, Mr. Chairman, uh, I would move that the commission make a recommendation to the select board that the town of Milton uh, accept the offer of this property. Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, and actually, if, if I can just put a stay on the motion for a moment and ask the public, are there any uh, abutters to this property or members of the public that would like to ask a question or make a comment? Seeing none, we go back to the motion on the table. Is there any discussion? All in favor? All right. All opposed? I'm abstaining. <laughs> Ooh, okay. All right. Uh, motion passes, and we will make that recommendation to the select board uh, to accept the donation from the donors. Second on the agenda is a notice of intent 166 Granite Avenue. We have a uh, written request for continuance until September 17th. Steve, can you give a little background of where we are on this? Uh, yes, we have a notice of intent. It, it uh, discussed a dumping that happened recently on the site, probably late last year, early this year, but it didn't include a previous, what I call a dumping, on the same site. And that's why I asked for uh, some more details and a plan showing both of those, those areas uh, before we even took it up here in, in, with the Conservation Commission. Thank you. So we have a written um, request for continuance. Unless there's an objection, we'll continue that until I September just had, 17th. I just had one question, Steve, in our package. Yes. We have a picture of a site and a lot of gravel or other um, debris. Is that a recent dumping or is that? Oh, yeah. That is the recent dumping. This is the more recent one. And just behind oh. it, is another uh, area that has been used for a driveway slash parking area okay. to the rear of the existing dwelling that's opposite uh, Granite Ave. Okay, and they didn't they didn't include even thinking about that. Um, the major lawyer uh, representing the the owner, uh, Mr. Lee, and I had a chat, but I don't think that message got transmitted to other people on the project team, okay? That's all. We had a chat on the site looking at things, and then I don't believe that he, he didn't take any notes. Okay. And that's a problem when people don't take notes on a site because they forget. That's all. No, no, no offense taken. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> okay, so we will expect sure. to see an updated notice of intent for our September. Exactly. Are there any questions or comments from about as the members of the public? In that case, uh, that uh, item is moved until September 17th. Next on the agenda, number three, is Notice of Intent 50 Summer Street. Anybody here for that? Yes. Well, Mr. Ryan? Yeah, Mr. Ryan. Oh, okay. Where would you like? Any, anywhere, and I'll put up the plan, okay. I think. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Uh, Good evening. Is that the proper plan, Mr. Rye? 
And identify and yourself. That is, I'm Stephen Rye with Land Planning. And I'm here with the owners, owners of the property and their daughter, uh, Chan Yu, Yuji Lee, and Christina Yu. Yeah. If I got that right, I hope. Yeah, you did. And uh, I do have green cards for notification of the butters. I don't know. That's great. Can you slide those over to Steve? Absolutely. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yep. So tell us, uh, tell us about the plan. So. Uh, the owners contacted us about this plan because we had uh, previously done a surveyed plan of their property back last year in December, uh, and we'd staked out the property lines. And I think that was in regards to your uh, enforcement order against them that they wanted to find out where the property lines were. Yes. So they contacted us, and we prepared now a notice of intent filing uh, for the for the work that was done in the backyard without an order of conditions, which was the extension of the yard. And grass area. Uh, so what we've done is prepared that uh, topographic plan showing detail of the site as well as the roadways around it and some of the drainage facilities there. And um, the wetland area has been delineated by a botanist and Thomas and his report is in the filing as well. So um, we provided you with, with uh, basically that um, plan and the notice of intent so that you may be able to allow an order of conditions for the project and what the proposal on the plan is to put in stone posts and they the, the owners have previously hired someone to prepare a planting plan which is incorporated into our, our notice of intent so two of the stone posts along the back property lines to delineate um, where the actual corners are <coughs> those are delineated by boxes on those corners and then emerald green arborvitaes along the back property line just inside the property line also to delineate the way the property line is and provide some buffer how, how many of them there's 21 of them there so they're basically about five to six feet apart and then uh, there were some sprinklers that were put in across onto the conservation land so we're we're calling out those they delineated with, with SHs on the plan. There's a, maybe three or four of them that go beyond the property line. And we're calling for them to be taken out, um, the pipes to be cut, and capping the ends of those. As well as they must be supplied by water from the lawn sprinklers on their property. So we're, we're saying find out where those are, cut them back five feet from the property line, and then just reconnect them up. Um, so that's yeah, will they be sufficient for the arborvitaes in terms of watering? Yeah, well, it's not intended to be there for the arborvitaes. It's intended to be there for the lawn. Okay, I, I'm just wondering about the, whether or not they're sustainable. Pretty hardy. Right. No, so I don't expect that they'll need them. Okay. Um, and then there's additional plantings that's that's provided on the conservation side of the property uh, and those were indicated on the planting plan that's before you as well that was prepared by somebody else but uh, we've incorporated that into the file and on that plan uh, it calls basically for witch hazel mountain holly alternate leaf dogwood and and uh, total of all those plants including the yabavite is about 43 plants so we're basically indicating that those locations where those plants are gonna be done should be marked out with pin flags and identified so that you can have your agent go out and look at them, make sure it looks appropriate for the site. And if they need to move them around a little bit, that could be done. Uh, and then allow planting, of course, with the order conditions. How, how big are they? Uh, they call for two to three foot high on each of the, on the planting list. I would assume it's like a three gallon bucket. Of I think without regard to what the plantings are, I think that essentially I, I, we hit all the points that we had requested that they do in terms of remediation following the enforcement order. Take a look at number six in the project notes, please on the plan so basically I can if you want me to just 
Uh, we, we talked to Tom Thomas from the DPW about the issue with the drainage because there is some slope instability along that drainage outlet. And he, he identified that he was aware of that, that they, it was his crew that ended up opening that back <coughs> up and that it was their responsibility to come back and do that. So that's what he had indicated to me. And he said to let the commission know just to contact him and he would take care of that. So as, as an update, Mr. Chairman, I spoke with Kathy Bowen today mm -hmm. and she talked to uh, Thomas McCarthy and he did not take a, take uh, ownership of that because that was part of the problem that was it was filled in by the applicants here tonight and then it was ex excavated by the town the town right. exactly so that mr rye is saying that he took responsibility and uh, that's incorrect from kathy as of today i'm sorry to say yeah, that was a very conversation with him, and he, he yeah. was aware of what it looked like out there and knew more work needed to be done. Right. But and he, he said did, that was a DPW issue. Well, uh, she also talked to the chairman of the DPW today, okay. and he said, no, they're not going to do it because the applicant actually created the condition. They should do it. What needs to be done? A rip wrap? Over the, uh, yes. The so what? I'm sorry. So we were recommended on the plan uh, that... Uh, the drainage outlet would be provided with a head wall of some sort to retain the, the uh, soil back there and also uh, stabilize the slopes right. and rip wrap within the bottom of the drainage channel. Stabilize the slopes how? Uh, either with uh, either by cut, cutting them back to be less steep or it, probably stone along the sides of it. Rip wrap. Uh, is he talking about riprap on the uh, the on base? On the bottom as well, yeah, yeah. So you could just kind of swing it like yes, a yeah. saucer. Yeah. <laughs> How far do you think you'd have to extend that riprap away from the, the outfall of the pipe? Uh, that's a good question. I could tell you on the field, but I don't, you know, I'm thinking maybe it's 20 feet, something like that. 20 feet? 15 or 20. Well, the, the looking on the plan, as well. it's that's more like 40, 50 feet. That's how long the uh, outlet ditch is on the plan. From the outlet if, to? Yes, if you look on the plan there. Take, take, take a look. This is the beginning. This yeah. is where the, yep. the uh, head wall should be. Mm -hmm. And this is the end of the outlet ditch on yeah, the plan. And I, I, so that's I, about 50 feet. But isn't there a difference between stabilizing the outlet source and then it continues as it has naturally after that? Yes, but this is a completely new ditch because the, it was the area was filled. That's the that's that, the issue. The area. How much was it filled? Do you know? I mean, was so, it filled a foot, three inches? How much? But was it buried it? the so, pipe. Yes, it buried the pipe. The topography that was shown on the top, some of the town uh, pictures you had in the file there is very similar to what's there on yeah, our plan. That's my recollection. There's really no change and the botanists had dug holes out there to try to identify where the wetland line is and was and uh, he said he get, got into some very compact material he knows is not placed there recently and that's the case throughout that area and it's just a two to three inch layer of topsoil that was obviously new material that was put over the top for the seeding of the lawn so I well, think it, the grade it, was you know, it, that may be true for a lot of the area, but one of the problems when we first went there to see this, we actually saw uh, when the DPW came to dig it out, we found the sprinkler heads down, right. and they were they were down. And so it wasn't just two or three inches of topsoil. The pipes, not not the vertical uh, yeah. nozzle, but the the pipes leading in were down, certainly more than a foot. Yes. So I think the real question is, and we may want to put this, you know, back on the homeowner to do some of this stabilization. How far it goes, I, I don't know, because I, my memory is, and I've, I've been there a lot, mm -hmm. um, but my memory is that the first maybe 10 feet is where it's un, unstable. Yes. Right. And after that, it seems to have just kind of meandered across the land. That's my recollection yes. as well. Mine as well, and I have pictures of it. And it's actually quite attractive. I mean, it's like nature took over, and, you know, that's what we saw when we were there. And that's okay. And yeah. that's about 10 feet out. So if we just did 10 feet, I don't think we need to go out 20 feet or something at all. I agree. It actually was kind of working pretty well, considering. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. 
I agree as well. Yeah. I think that would be fine. Now, what you don't want to do more than necessary, you know. If it's working to some extent, I think we just Good kind point. of let nature take its course at this point. So to me, the easy part is uh, the riprap on the, the slope sides and the yeah. base. Yep. But what's the head wall component of it? What, I mean, that sounds like a, well, a little bit more... The block structure. With the pipe rest on the head wall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and then we could put... Right. It could be either, either block around it, or, or it could be, if it was cut back a little bit more, we could do riprap up the side as well. You know, but it's steep right now. We would typically see an, an end wall of some sort there. All right, that, that, makes, that makes sense to me. Indeed. Yeah. Um, yes. I mean, I think less is better in this case, in fact. Mm -hmm. um, I'm confused about the planting plan. Where are these plants going? I mean, the deciduous ones, not the arborvitae. They're indicated on the planting plan. And there's, there's another sheet. Is uh, there a sheet on this one? I've got three sheets. Yes. Is that right? Hang on, I'll yes. put it on the board here. Uh, plants. Uh, where are they going on the site? I guess here, here, here it is, Judith, right there. Oh, okay. Okay, if you take a look right here. Yeah, see that? We, we don't want something that looks like, you know, like a kind of planting we don't do. A German forest? No German yeah, forest? Yeah, Versailles, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and also, you know, the upper bodies lined up like that. I mean, I can play devil's advocate. You, you don't want to destroy your view of that lovely area you have in back. You know, we don't want you to, to cultivate it, but you can look at it. And if you put these arborvitaes in, you're destroying your view of this lovely area back there. So, I mean, you should put in a diversity of plants. You should put in like three or four different types of evergreens and different heights, and then you'd have this kind of lovely view through them. Just, I'm just saying to your benefit. Yeah. To your benefit. Don't do a row like it's a big fence. That's, yeah. that's ugly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I mean, to that extent, yeah. the idea. Does, the idea, idea. Yeah. The request. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So, this is about 43 altogether right. on the plan. Just, yeah. So, is that, what? is that, is what? that I, something that the commission would feel comfortable the with if they provided another? Yeah, do you like at least three conditions? different types of evergreens? Because if a blight comes along, which happens on a regular basis, and you have all one type of tree, you've lost them all. Yeah. Whereas if you have three or four different types of trees, and it hits one, you've still got the rest, and sometimes yeah, and they'll fill in. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's, that's better for wildlife, too. Okay. It's better for yes. wildlife, yeah. too, than up this. Down, yeah. down. We can do, we can do, yeah. And where you're planting them, you, you can't do just a foot into your property. You've got to do two feet because they're going to spread out. In another 10 years, they'll be this Pick wide. Yeah. <laughs> so plant them two feet and just be yes. fair. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> where are these trees going? Yeah, well, these that's trees? what I'm wondering. Um, you know, on our property, we can't. Right. The, are these the deciduous yes. shrubs? Okay, so that's, uh, that's over the property line. Do we... Do you want, I mean, I'm going to defer to the horticulturalists here. It's when the wetland, it is, those yeah. are wetland plants. They're all wetland plants, except yeah. one of them. You gave me the idea, I would do that. Yeah. How many, how many plants? One of them is not. The witch hazel isn't really. It's it does enough. quite well, though. Yeah, but that, but it's not all wet back there. That's there correct. There's buffer, so it is That's right. somewhat appropriate. Yeah, this, this on the, uh, let me see, that would be the. Uh, I don't know, I east, must, westerly I think, side. I think so on the, be, yeah, sorry. on the western side, I would, I would um, do the witch do hazels in a cluster, and yeah. then spread the other ones out on along the edge of the, yeah. the wetland. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're good with the planting plan, with the addition that they'll mix up some of the arborvitaes, mm -hmm. and we'll add to the plan the uh, a ten foot stretch of stabilization slope with riprap, and just blocking the uh, outfall. Is that? Did or I say that correctly? No, blocking. No, I think that would be appropriate. Okay, and the third planting, the third plant down, mountain holly. I, I don't know what that is. Do you mean a mountain laurel or an American holly? Uh, this is again not my plan. This is a plan they had done by somebody else. 
So I've not done anything with the planting myself. Hemo Panthus. I don't know it. I don't know it either. It's not something we usually use for yeah, restoration. Yeah, I've never heard of a mountain holly. The only American uh, native holly isn't the American holly. This this may just be a common name, though. So, uh, if you could look it up. I will. Uh, so she's the, yeah. Hemo Panthus. H e m o p a n t h u s. And then Mucronathus. Can you read it? It's really small. M O. Joe, you probably already know this, right? The I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't look it up beforehand. <laughs> right. Right. Oh, okay. It's Ilex. Yeah. That's what it oh, is. Oh, it's an Ilex? It is Ilex. This is what this is saying. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good. Yeah, just a different name. It's Ilex Mucronata. So we should correct that. It's actually Ilex. Oh. <laughs> yeah. What is it called? <laughs> well, a common name. I have not heard of it. Is Catberry. Catberry. Yeah. That's a new one on me. Yeah. Okay. Well, Great. I learned Fine. something today. Yeah. After that. So, um, Steve, can you give us a, a, a new plan with those changes? Just change that yeah. mountain holly mm -hmm. to yeah. whatever. Ilex. Ilex. We, we can do that. Um, and then add to the plan the uh, 10 feet of riprap and stabilization and blocking the outfall. Is that something we could yes. get to you and we can, we can be approved? It's an order of conditions now referencing yes. that that has, has to yes. come to you. Yes. We're looking not to come back again and spend yes. more money. Of right. course. Okay. So we'll do it as a conditional motion. Sure. But before we get there, are there any abutters uh, or members of the public that have a question or would like to make a comment? Uh, anything else from the commission members? Mm -hmm. We're good to go with the changes uh, that we've mentioned uh, with a request that the plan be submitted and our approval is conditional upon acceptance of that plan. But we can take the vote tonight and we can get started. All right, is there such a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Good to go. Thank you very much for coming in again. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Good luck with it. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Of course. Do we need contact just to make sure we yeah. know the items? It's not Certainly. clear. That Certainly. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. That's letting me have to be yeah. yeah. you know, Next on the agenda is number four, enforcement order at 669 Randolph Avenue. Yeah, welcome. Good evening. Welcome. Can you identify yourself and uh, give Hi. us your presentation? My name is Andy Vo. Um, I'm the owner of uh, 669 Randolph Avenue. Uh, before we start, I want to apologize for my action. Uh, I moved into this house uh, two months ago. I got it. Uh, and when I moved in here, um, I saw like a, some dead tree that uh, could fall into the house anytime. And I was really nervous. Um, because of the hazardous condition, so I hire um, a tree company and they remove the tree. Um, and I, did, I didn't know, um, I, I was, my house is in the 100 feet buffer of wetland and I really apologize for that. Um, I, I'm sorry. Um, and also, um, when I'm in, in this house for two months, I, uh, I got some flooding issue um, because the house is on uh, a slope. And uh, every time when it rained, like um, the water get into the garage door, and I got so far uh, too big uh, flood in the basement. And uh, my brother lived in the basement; it's a finished basement. And um, and also uh, because of the sloped driveway, uh, every time when you back out of the driveway on Randolph Avenue, because it's two lane, it's very dangerous. So you, you, all you can see is really only the back of your bumper. And um, in the morning, sometimes when you back out, not only dangerous for me, but I'm causing traffic when I back out. Um, so if I can uh, get approval um, for uh, to get like a drain to um, install on my property, so that way when it rain, it drain away from the house, drain the water away from the house. And um, also, um, you know, re um, redo my driveway so that way I can turn around on my property so I can turn around, drive out so that I don't, I don't have to back out. Um, 
I feel is very dangerous. Um, I talked to the um, the building department, um, and you know I got I got approval for the uh, paving in the front, but I asked about uh, in the back. They they said you know check with the engineering department. I did check with the engineering. I um, talked to um, Chris uh, Trudeau. Um, I sent him an email. Um, Sure, sure. Why don't you just um, just a I, I explained the situation, and um, as you can see on the email, um, I, I um, you know, Chris, Chris seemed to be okay with it, but I want to check with the commission. Um, I also checked with Joe from the building department. He's fine with it, um, but I, I want to check with the commission to see if it's okay uh, for me to do some uh, paving and... Uh, do it install like a uh, a drain, so when it drain it, when it rain hard like to the, tonight it's gonna be another rain. Right now I have um, I put temporary pump outside my house. I put sandbag um, in front of my garage. I can show you picture. Um, I think I can show picture that. Um, yeah, we have that picture. Oh, you have picture. It. I yeah, mean, um, have it. Is that uh, at the back of the house? It is the back of the house. I mean, like um, it's actually the side. Of the, the side of the house. Yeah. So um, I'm looking at the house. It's one side. Which, if you're standing from Randolph Avenue, Attach looking the, at your house, yep. Are you the, the closest Attach house to the DPW yard? Yes, sir. All right. We we need these pictures. We've had these pictures before. Okay. Uh, th this is an adjacent project that's on the agenda tonight, and uh, Jerry. Are, are you familiar with this area? No. Uh, Arthur, you are. Hans, you are. Yes. Okay. Because this, this is evidence of water in, in the area that we're concerned about. Right. Yeah, the 7 Eleven project is behind this property. This is, is part this of the a, hydrology is this study that, that we're going to speak of. Oh, tonight. is this. Yes. About that seven mm -hmm. yes. it's right yeah. across the street. It's on no, no. it's, oh, no. On, it's the on the same side. side. On the same side is the seven eleven. All those houses along Randolph oh. Ave. The oh. complex is behind them. Okay. Literally adjacent. Okay. So when I first purchased the house, I before I purchased the house I asked if there's any flooding issue. I was told that there's no issue, and <laughs> I got the house. So now Funny. it's just I, I'll do with it. I uh, can, I can only move forward. And I, 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 uh, I shouldn't laugh at that. I apologize for it, but it's it's an, it's been an issue for us for many years. This is the issue right now. I mean, like tonight, I can tell you there's a big thunderstorm. Yeah. So every, every night. Um, so the type of work you're talking about. Um, generally requires a notice of intent application, which will require engineering plans, civil engineering plans, and then to, you would have to, you would want the, um, to have an engineer look at how to best resolve your drainage issue. Okay. So, because it's very flat in the back. Mm -hmm. So even if you put a drain in, you need to go somewhere with that drain. Mm -hmm. And you may have to ask the adjacent property owner for an easement because they have the only uh, property that has less elevation that you can drain to. Mm -hmm. So you will need an engineer, okay. I'm sorry to say, no, no, I, on the property. We're just, we're just providing I, uh, you some very good advice tonight. Thank you. Uh, the, I, according to the email, Chris asked me to talk to Alan Bishop. Uh, that's my next step to go talk to Alan from the engineering department. Um, so I would have, but I mean, I want to talk to the community first before. Um, sure. Well, first of all, I want to say that I'm sorry this happened to you. Um, you've only been here two months, and it's terrible that all of this has happened. And uh, in an odd sort of way, you're giving us some good evidence of what the drainage situation is on that section of Randolph Ave. This is empirical uh, evidence of. Uh, what we need to be dealing with the drainage for other issues around your house so i'm sorry that this all happened to you you've done the right thing no i apologize um, for cutting the tree without <laughs> getting approval I'm, yeah I'm now sorry. you know that in fact there's a thing called jurisdiction near wetlands and near streams and you're you're in that jurisdiction so you know we watch out for everyone's house flooding all over town okay. so we don't want your house flooded we don't want your neighbor's house flooded either okay. um, so 
one of the reasons why you can't cut down trees is simply that they pick up so much moisture from the ground. So if they're cut down, all that extra water goes someplace, which is into your basement. So for all these reasons, yeah. that's why you come before us. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so your brother's living in the basement? Is that what you say? Yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. Shucks. Well, uh, so what is before us is the enforcement order. And we have a, uh, generally, we have a performance standard where if you take down a tree within our jurisdiction, that you have to replace it with three trees, not the same size. But we also have a, uh, an exception for maintenance activity. And if something is dead and causing a public hazard or a danger, um, that would be an exemption from our performance standard. Now these pictures uh, that I'm looking at here of the trees, uh, when, when were they taken? When were they dead? Yeah, when, when were the pictures taken? I was taken by, right before I cut it, Joe. Which was? Uh, probably um, mid-June. You said that was a recommendation during your home inspection? Yeah, it's uh, the, uh, on, the, on this page here. As they point out, um, they're, they're pretty bad. Well, I, how did the enforcement order issue? Do you know, Steve? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, let me um, cease and desist from any activity. Activity has been conducted within a resource area subject to the Town of Milton bylaw plus Mass General Law 131, Section 40, without approval from the Conservation Commission. Removal of mature trees and disturbance of soil within a resource area. No work shall be performed in a jurisdiction, ju jurisdiction area without the Conservation Commission approval, which then goes to the obvious next step of filing a notice of intent. But I, I'm, I'm hung up on something here. Removal of mature trees, that's different from removal of dead trees. Well, were, there, uh, were there many trees taken down? Yes, but most of them, if you look at every picture, uh, most, there are lot, not only one tree that are dead, there are a lot of trees that are dead on the right side and on the back side of the house. Right. So uh, approximately how many trees so did, you, did you pay them to take down? So one tree, two trees. So they only, they only took down trees that were, dead. that were diseased or dead? Yes, yes sir. There was no way to say what the trees were after they were taken down, of course. Okay. So I couldn't, you know, mature like trees. Ash. It looks like ash trees. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and there were some branches on the ground that are there just already. So I mean, when I hired them, well. I, just, I didn't know they're not supposed to pull them out. I'm sorry. So, so what's the soil disturbance? Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. When, I, the, when they, they pull the stumps out? So what happened was when the, uh, the back of the house, um, if you look at this tree, um, they just take like a backhoe or something yeah, in there? Yeah, they, they, they come back there because they had to get, get the machine and what they did is the machine is heavy and it's kind of like pushed the soil down a little bit when they go to the back. So they have to get the machine out. So I would In the wetland leave. soils. There were, there's, there's a wetland back there. Oh, I know. <laughs> well, where really. And he was in the wetland. Well, the picture you're showing us, is the tree on you, your side of the property, or is this your, which, there's a yeah, fence. Yeah. My, my property line is like another uh, five feet, a little bit back on the, the, uh, the, um, the from fence. The, from the fence. Yeah, from the fence. This is the back of your property, or the side? It's the side. And the tree is on your property, on the tree is on my property. So you're standing in your neighbor's yard taking this picture? No, no, that's my property. That's, that, that fence it probably extends beyond beyond his fence. fence. Yeah, oh, that's okay. beyond the fence, but the, okay. the probably line is, is another five feet because that's wetland. They don't want to put the fence in the wetland. Right. Now, this isn't one of the trees you took down, is it? Yes. That's, that, that's a living tree. Yeah. Because of that branch. Well, the branch is an issue, <laughs> clearly. That looks like a branch from another tree. Yeah, but another the tree, tree itself is quite healthy. This tree shouldn't have come down. You can see it's butted up. This looks like it could be early June or late May. <clears throat> Yeah. That's a healthy tree. Yeah, I agree. Sorry about that. Is that is, is that I mean, looking I, I at? I was afraid. I would that the, that that may be right. That may be the only tree that because I was afraid that it, that branch would fall down. So. Well, I could see you wanted to take that branch out of the tree. Yeah. yeah. That was a hazard. I I, I, I asked the tree person. He said to, to 
to remove that and I mean I'm sorry. Did You've gotten bad advice from people. <laughs> is that are we looking at the DPW yard? That's no, the yacht side yacht or are we looking no, the other way? This is the back of my yacht and the, the one on the side um, this is this is still my probably but the right side of this is DPW. On the right, right side of that, the yes, right that would make sense. W. Yes. In fact, if you look behind you, uh, there's the DPW yard here. Yep. And this is Mr. Vo's property here. And the fence we're looking at? And the fence was right here, right? Is that correct? No, the fence is the back of the house. Yeah, fence the fence of, is here? Yeah, the fence is there. I, I'm pretty sure I saw a fence there. There, there is a fence there, but I didn't touch the fence. There's oh no, no, there. I we didn't want to. I didn't say we. You did touch the fence, but there is a fence there right is here. A fence there. There's a fence, fence here. That, right. That fence that you're looking at is uh, is my fence. Okay. Oh, that's that's on the other side. That's the other, yeah, that's over, that's over here. Right? At the bottom. Oh, oh, the bottom here. Yeah, that one right there. Okay, but the wetland does go up into probably right up in here. Yes. I'm just going to make the observation that if this is a uh, mid-June photograph that this tree is far from advanced in comparison to the trees on my property for mid-June. And there appears to be clear evidence of disease in this photograph. Which, which photo are you looking at? This is the one with the branch from another tree on it. Where's, where's the, the evidence of disease? The lower limbs, if you look at the branches coming out, just, oh, just above the fence. I couldn't conclude that. There's, there's nothing on them. And if you look high into the tree, uh, you will see plenty of instances of dead branches. So this may be a marginal situation. Maybe if we get an opinion not strike from the tree me as company. being an altogether healthy tree at all. Pretty healthy to me. It looks healthy to me as well. But at any rate, I, so. The fence in this picture, Mr. Ho, is it's back. not on your property line. It's in front of your property line it's the back. in the back. It's the back. Uh, it's over right here. There. Yep, right there. But you're right. So this tree was behind. The, the fence is here. The fence yes. is here. Yep. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. So yes. That is right. Okay. Was that fence taken down? They take this fence down to cut the tree. Did they put it back up? No, not yet. You okay, asked that's me to stop. You asked me to stop. Oh, we're right, yeah. exactly. So the fence is gone? The fence it's is down, down on my, it's laying on my, just the right, the left side of the <coughs> Because, well, here's what I suggest. You've given us some very, very good information tonight. Um, I mean, I, I really apologize. I'm sorry. For we appreciate very much you saying that. That's, I, that's very gentlemanly of you. Thank you. Um, my suggestion is we've got three trees taken down. Obviously, some of them are, is dead. I mean, some of them really look dead. Um, the one I would suggest is living, so I, I think we could uh, come up with a solution where there are three plantings, um, and I think there's enough space to put them there. I don't, maybe on which I, side? I think we want a sidewalk at some time. Um, <laughs> don't you think so? I can't. Do you know how many times yeah. we've been there? This particular <laughs> house? No. You know, where, you, know, this house. you know where the discharge pipe is from the D DPW yard? Yeah, on that side. It's right. It's literally adjacent right to the property. That's correct. And it, it's, it's actually further down here. It's, it's dumping water right in here. So the, the DPW yard, they, they remember they had the trucks there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we asked them to move them. Right. And then they tried to regrade this area. That's where it's discharging. There's a fence here. And the discharge goes right under the fence. And discharges into this area. This is all wet. All wet, right yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. This is, this is the area where 15 years ago there was a project there at 7-Eleven, mm -hmm. um, and some of the neighbors came in and they had canoes. Huh. We have pictures of canoes right here. Um, there's that, there was that much water there. Mm -hmm. And that, that may be a factor in, a, in a, another agenda item tonight. Um, so to move this along, I would suggest that if we take one tree, um, and if there's a three to one performance standard, three trees, and these are not large ones, um, and I'd suggest that uh, if you have, a, do you have any assistance from a landscape planner, or do you, you know somebody that they can give you guidance and assistance? So 
if, if you're going to move... I talk with Steve and see what kind of tree can, can grow in that. that if area. he's going to be moving forward with the driveway yeah. repair and... Yeah, you might want to hold. Right? That, yes. Is that what you're going to say? Yeah. Well, I would say combine it into a single application. I mean, Absolutely. It, what's your time frame in, in trying to potentially get that done? As soon as possible. As soon as possible. So, yeah. you know... I why, why don't we do that? Why don't we defer this... Mm -hmm. uh, it'll be no adverse impact on you to defer it and then put it in a package. We're going to be looking for three trees okay. um, to be planted as a result of taking the live tree here. Okay. So that's a good idea, Hans. Yes. We'll do it in one package, one okay. plan. Oh, okay. Can it be anywhere on the property or have to be in the back? Or? No, anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And your idea of doing a turnaround on your property so you can come out straight, yeah. you know, it makes okay. so much sense. Okay. Otherwise, oh, it does. It's a danger so, to everybody. Yeah, you don't want to plant the trees and then do the turnaround. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's, Appreciate it. Uh, yeah. So, so uh, you mentioned the notice of intent. How do I do that process? Uh, Pro probably so, talk to Steve yeah. or Kathy Bowen, and they'll give you some guidance, and you can walk right next door and talk to them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Actually, the uh, the mailman that delivered the letter, he said, "How come they didn't just walk over?" <laughs> 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 Appreciate it. That's Great. very good. Uh, so uh, I'll go with the process and um, uh, see we'll you defer this, await your notice of intent to fix the backyard, okay. and then we'll combine everything and move forward positively from that. Uh, try and, why don't we just <laughs> confirm the caliper of the trees? That, yes. For replacement so that we don't get hung up on. Three inch? That'd be fine. Mm -hmm. That's, That's fine, sure. Three inch. I'll record it. Thank you. That's good. Thank you know you. what that means? It, it's just it's the size of the, it, it's it's the diameter, diameter I guess, of, diameter of, the, of the tree. Two inches from the base. Two inches from the base. Yep. Yep. Certainly, please, yeah. anytime. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you very much, Ed. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank Appreciate you. it. Everybody. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> it's thunderstorm tonight. I don't know. Every right. time this rain, I can't sleep. Right. <laughs> we got to hold on to those. We got to hold on to those pictures. Yeah. Uh, next on the agenda is uh, number five, that's Zero Truman Parkway. This is a continued hearing. Good evening. Hey, good evening. I'm Rich Kirby from LEC Environmental. Ron what was the last name? Boussier. Oh, Ron, right? Thank you, sir. Yes, uh, Ron is the um, uh, demolition contractor from Patriots um, Environmental. Environmental, thank you. And uh, Ken and Tony are the applicants. Yes. So uh, since our last hearing, we had an opportunity to conduct a site visit with the Conservation Commission and we provided a response to comments uh, to the commission yesterday, which I realize is a um, short turnaround considering we have a hearing tonight. But we wanted to have an opportunity at least to distill the document. I know it's a lot of information. Um, it seems like a lot, but there's really not much to it. And if, uh, if I could, I'd like to go through briefly the, uh, the items in the, in the report we prepared. <clears throat> the first item, and uh, was provide the water sampling results for the uh, man-made concrete line lagoon. Um, if the commission recalls on the site, that was us. Here is the uh, the round lagoon. Um, if, just to remind the commission, this is a um, called the secondary clarifier. And its function was to um, pump water from the deposit into the lagoon and so, the, so the um, material would settle out and then that water would be pumped across the deposit to the paper mill where it be, would be used in the production of paper. And there is, um, it's a funnel in shape, it's concrete lined, it's a, it's a, it's a funnel. There are pipes and uh, that go into and out of the bottom of the uh, lagoon or the bottom of the clarifier. 
to get the water from the deposit to the clarifier and then from the clarifier to the uh, what was the paper mill across the street. So it stands to reason that considering water from the deposit hasn't been pumped there in at least 10 years, there, there weren't any uh, PCBs or any other chemicals in the, uh, in the water in 2005 or, in, uh, or recently. So we have 2005 and 2019. The test results are in there uh, in the report that we submitted. And in, in addition to PCBs, we also tested for the uh, RCRA, the eight RCRA metals like arsenic, barium, cadmium, Etc., and it was also tested for uh, PC, uh, I'm sorry, extractable petroleum hydrocarbons. The sediment was what was and the use of the facility? It was, a, it was a paper mill. Okay, so what contaminants of concern are usually associated with a paper mill? In this, why don't you kind of back? And so, uh, the purpose for the Milton property was just a water treatment plant, it would extract up to a million and a half gallons of water a day mm -hmm. from the Ponce River. Mm -hmm. It would extract uh, any of the debris that we collected from the river, yep. just the pH, and then it would be pumped in two 24 inch pipes that were in a closed uh, bridge onto the hypoxide. Okay. So there was no chemicals. There's there was no chemical treatment or nothing whatsoever occurring there. Okay. How, how do you adjust the pH? Uh, they would adjust the pH on the hypoxide. They had uh, inside storage facilities for that. Yeah, I guess my question was. What was your rationale for choosing the, the types of sampling that you... Oh, I think it was just a standard sampling test, but I think yeah, some of the concern was that we have PCBs in the deposit, yeah. and folks wanted to know if, there, if the water was being pumped to this, you know... Sediment associated with the... Exactly. So, okay. We, we wanted to put people's uh, concerns to rest that the water that was on our property is in no way contaminated even though we know sections of the Depots River has elevated levels of PCBs. Yeah, it wouldn't be the water, though. It would be the sediment, correct, if there's PCB impact? Yes, that's absolutely correct. Is that, okay, just to confirm. Uh, and Appendix A and Appendix B contain those results. The next item <coughs> on, on our list here was to provide a copy of the Phase Two environmental assessment which it's uh, almost 200 pages. A copy of it was submitted to the commission. Um, most of that document has to do with the Hyde Park property across the river. But there were about five pages that do mention the subject property on the Milton side. Thank you. Sorry. I'll just show you quickly. The, um, <laughs> the, uh, the pages that mention the subject property are listed in the, in the, in the response. The um, next item, Naponza Greenway trail signage and pavement repair following demolition. Uh, we're fully committed to putting up warning signs during, commission, during the demolition to let pedestrians and cyclists know that there is truck traffic coming in and out of the site. And if for whatever reason, the pavements uh, on the Truman Parkway are in the, uh, in the, um, <clears throat> the greenway is altered during demolition. It'll be repaired following demolition. We're fully committed to that. Um, there was a mention from the public last time about noise during the demolition. And we included a uh, Article 3 of a town meeting warrant held in 2017, voting to amend Chapter, uh, chapter 26 of the Milton bylaws uh, pertaining to operation of mechanized vehicles. And that basically overviews the times that the town allows mechanized vehicles to operate. And we'll be fully complying with Chapter 26 on that item. A copy of the uh, Article 3 of the warrant is included in our response. Uh, there were some questions about the asbestos abatement. And uh, we have uh, in writing questions and answers from Patriots Environmental overviewing how the asbestos will be removed from the site. It'll be in containers uh, on the subject property, sealed containers. Uh, it's not gonna be left on the ground or stockpiled in a pile or anything like that. It'll be, it'll be in containers and then trucked off the site. Hey, can I hold you there? Because I was actually surprised to hear, Tony, I think you, you named it. It's, it's that galvanized- Gal, gal asbestos. Gal asbestos. I'd never heard the term before. The form of asbestos with a metal coating on it. it creates the side of the building. Is it a metal sh 
sheathing with asbestos coating or asbestos yes. coating with a metal? It's metal. Asbestos metal. on the outside. No, asbestos on the inside. The inside. Yeah. Uh, okay. But anyway, we, we saw it. Yes. Now, how do you get that into a sealed container? And what I'm really looking for is when, when we got to the area where the underpass is going beneath the train tracks, just on the Truman Parkway side of that is where the staging area was going to be. Is that where you're going to stockpile? No. This Not asbestos, no. Not asbestos. No. That would probably be live loaded? Excuse me? You'd probably live, live load that into a... The asbestos, so. yeah, it's, it gets... But how do you live load that on the river side? Over the, um, over the track crossing. There's two grades, under the tracks and over the tracks. See, so you all have a... So We're working on a permit Let me back for the up because I, I thought that the problem was for the demo. Am I correct that you don't yet have a deal with uh, uh, MBTA? We're working the on over getting our permits, yes. Okay, but does for the, the demo. Grade crossing. But is that for the project, the, the development project, or no. is that for the no, demo no, project? No, that's just for the demo, if I, if I may. Yeah. There's two means of access. Right. This is the one that we all parked here, walked in, went under the, right. under the bridge where the deer was. Um, and then this is the secondary means of access. This is an accurate crossing. And this access will be used as well as this one. This access will primarily be used to get the heavier equipment in and onto the site and to remove the, remove the uh, asbestos. asbestos. This over here, this one over here, with the staging area and things like that that are shown on the RDA plan, that's really to just have the smaller equipment go in and out of the site to remove smaller debris, or it will be stockpiled. So the on-grade crossing uh, are the two permits? Because I thought that to we, deal with the we T... We need a permit, yes, for MBTA for the, for the on-grade <coughs> crossing, and then from DCR for this section here. Right, I've got a question, a very specific question. Mm -hmm. Do you need two permits? One for the demo, and then one for whatever your construction project is afterwards. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And the second one would require, you know, the train gates and yes. a controlled crossing. Yes. yes. Okay, that was my question. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, the the issue came up during the site visit about the caliper tree size to be depicted on the plans. I went back and reviewed. We met with the commission, of course, in the fall, uh, in October, to talk a little bit about this project and pending notice of intent. And we had talked about the plan requirements and what the commission would like to see, et cetera. I reviewed it, and uh, there was discussion for about uh, three and a half minutes about uh, the tree size. And I think the chairman um, had made reference to a Robin Street project where a four inch DBH trees were required to be depicted on a plan. And then I believe it was you had, that had suggested that perhaps six inch trees would be appropriate given the context of the project and the site. Um, there was no opposition from any of the commission members and the discussion moved on to the next topic. So we responded accordingly and showed the six inch uh, trees on the plan. You chose her over me? <laughs> you didn't object. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's good. So that's, I, I'm, I'm glad, I thought my, mem my memory was correct, and I'm glad it was, and I'm so glad you had the Milton TV to, so we could, we could look it up. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to spend a couple of minutes at the site visit. There was some discussion about the jurisdiction of the water tank and the, and the, the concrete lagoon, um, <laughs> making reference to a project about 10 years ago, I guess, there was an a concrete lined pond, a landscape pond or something like that that the commission had deemed jurisdictional. There was a buffer zone project or something like that associated with it. Um, a, f a few things. The, um, I went back to the Wetlands Protection Act and looked in the definition section. And in the, the definition of pond, it talks about how, you know, what, what is considered a pond and what isn't. And um, it specifically includes basins or lagoons which are part of wastewater treatment plants. Granted, this isn't a waste, or wasn't a wastewater treatment plant. But then the regulations go on to exclude swimming pools or other impervious human-made basins. Um, so that's, that's is the only reference that I could find in the Wetlands Protection Act regarding that. Um, secondly, this differs a little bit from 
the 2010 project, although I haven't been to the site, I'm only looking at the plans and the documents that were made available. But this, this is an, more of an apparatus as opposed to somebody lining a concrete pond. Uh, we have pipes and pumps going into and out of this thing to serve as a storage and water clarifying facility for the production of paper. It was in a backyard pond that had naturalized over, over the years. I so haven't I think, had an opportunity to go out there either, but what is the elevation, the top elevation relative to the ground? Is it, is it a, does it sit above ground or just in the ground? It's, it is in the ground. Okay. The, um, I mean, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's in, it's in the ground. The, uh, the, the, the floor is sloped. Mm -hmm. um, and down here. It's a cone. Is a, is yeah. a collection of the pipes, the feeder pipe comes in, the drainage pipe goes out, draining, draining it. To the wall doesn't, the, the, the sidewalls don't extend above the ground surface. No, they don't. Well. They don't. And above the sloped floor is a grid, a round mm -hmm. circular grid to collect, to collect large, large. It's a metal that like rebar out, grid. Which has to be pulled down. It's very heavy. And, um, and at, at the ground level is, the, the grid is below, and the ground level is, you know, many, it's a few feet above. Six to eight feet, actually. Six to eight feet. That, that's my guess. Yeah. Makes sense. I, uh, the slopes are oh, approximately so. that, yeah. It's almost no water in it at this point, depending on the rain. It's just a collection of rainwater. Ken and Tony also provided me with a report that Epsilon Associates prepared back in 2005 when they were retained to review the site and determine what the resource areas are, and they came to the same conclusion that we did. And we in included a copy of their report in in with our document. Can, can I stop you there? Because I, I think it's appropriate to ask this question. Um, we've been concentrating on the lagoon here. This one, uh, what do you call it? That's just a water tank. Uh, above ground. Above ground water tank. But when we looked at it, um, it seemed to have, it was holding water. Yep. And it had cat and nine tails and yeah, all kinds of growth. Yeah, there's some vegetation growing in, sure. Um, I think what we did on the, um, Cohane property, that's the Brush Hill Road, Arnold, uh, Walcott, Arnold Road, 86 Walcott, Walcott, right. Walcott I believe. Yeah. Um, that was, I believe, hydric soil. Do you remember? It I was, do. It was a, a pond, it was concrete line, but mm -hmm. it had been there such a long time that it was actually a functioning wetland. And we had, there was a wetland scientist, he flagged it. It's not like we were pushing it. Mm -hmm. And it turned out that it, it was a wetland. As a matter of fact, we, we used the same plan again in 2017 because part of that property was sold and they had access off of, I think, is it Walcott or Arnold? I'm um, sorry, I don't, I don't there's know. A new, there's a new, new uh, access cut. Place. There's a new access yeah. and two new homes were built there. Mm -hmm. And so we just approved it again in 2017. So we approved it in 2010 originally and then we approved it again in 2017. And it was based upon, I believe it was hydric soil and, and Plants. Well, I'm not sure you can have, if, if in, certainly in this case, I mean, if, we're, if we have a concrete apparatus, a concrete bowl, whether it's can sitting on it top hold, of the ground. Hold a second. So in, in this case, I'm not, I've never been to that site, so I don't know if the concrete has broken up over the years or it wasn't installed properly and there's an interface between the water and the pond versus the groundwater that's beneath it. I don't know if um, it had been a wetland before and somebody lined it with concrete. Maybe they wanted it to hold water year round so they could skate in it in the winter. I'm not sure. Uh, but in this case, we have, in my opinion, more of an apparatus that is, has a function to it. We have infrastructure associated with that apparatus going into and out of it. Um, Which one are you talking about now? Well, well certainly the, um, the lagoon. Okay. With, uh, with, with the infrastructure, with the pipes going into and out of it, it had served a function. But, but, but also at one point, if I can interject, that would be true of the above ground tank. Now that above ground tank has a four foot thick concrete pad that rises above the ground. Mm -hmm. And so when they uh, disabled that above ground tank and built the concrete uh, clarifier, that round uh, concrete clarifier, they disassembled the pump that was associated with it and cut one of the panels off of that so it wouldn't hold a regular amount of water. 
it varies that at different times of the year there's no water in that above ground tank to there's a couple of inches of water in that tank. John, I, remember I, the hole that we looked into on the yes. side of it? That's what he's referring I, to. Oh, I know that. I know that. That's good description. That, that, if you go around the back of that tank, that foundation goes down about six, right, five, is, five or six feet. Yeah. Foundation wall going vertically. So, but what, what's at the bottom? It, it, it's, it, it has concrete in it as well. A footing. Yeah. It's but a not, footing is different than a floor. No, there's a concrete know. floor in it. Yeah, there's a concrete floor, a but the... The foundation holding up that floor is pretty deep. So six, seven. I don't feet. think that. I'm not sure that matters um, to what to where they're going. They just no, they're the wondering. If, I, I don't care about. But right. they're wondering there is there a, is there a concrete creep floor there? And the answer is yes, because yes. that's what's holding the water in place. Yes. And what you're Are saying is, asking is their if it's floor. jurisdictional. Yes. The lagoon. Yes. No, no, no. Both. Therefore, there's no connection to groundwater. From the tank. That's John, what you're I, I, That's right. the reference. We've, we've already done it. We've done it twice. Yeah, but John, I think we can distinguish the Cohane property than the, from this property in particular because the Cohane, Cohane property, in fact, it was used initially as a pond before the lining came in. We had some history on that house. And it's, it was a depression to begin with. So it was it connected was, to the in groundwater. Fact, it was collecting groundwater to begin with. Right. They were using it for planting, and I think they were using it as a little pond. And then subsequently, it was lined. Remember we got a history of the house about that? And it, it's, it's a property where, in fact, that was a, sort of a bowl, a natural bowl, that then they lined. So that's quite distinct from what is, we're looking at on this industrial. Water. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it, it's also separated from the deposit from upland. In fact, the, the the piles of soil that were excavated to make room for this concrete lined apparatus are between the between the lagoon and the and the uh, and the river, and they're shown on the plan there. Sure. Yeah, we did. I, I we did see, see that. Yes. I don't see them as similar at all. I see them as, as very different. Oh, I'm not pushing. I'm. I'm yeah. not editorializing one way or the other. I just want to be consistent in what criteria we utilize. Yes. And in the past, we just did Cunningham Pool became Cunningham Pond. Concrete line, so, right? But, but <laughs> there's water flowing the, into the it. The spring fed. Exactly. Exactly. So the use yes. of the spring the, fed. Yeah. Partial yeah. spring okay. fed. Sure. The only water but that is, gets in here is from whenever it rains. Mm -hmm. And then most of it but also the definition yeah. under the act, the, the concrete line basins, it, it can go either way. But given that this was built for an industrial use, for industrial use, mm -hmm. not for recreational use, right. I'm, I'm fine with the, yeah, the non-jurisdiction. Chairman, if I could just kind of give a little history on the historical use. Up until the creation of the concrete sedimentation basin in 1967, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, through uh, MDC at the time, leased land to the west of where that round lagoon or that Mammy concrete basin is. And they actually had, uh, we have uh, some photographs, they actually had aerials where they would have uh, lagoons and ponds that would cover about a half acre to an acre of land, but they would then pump through their property across the Neponsa River onto the High Park side. Hmm. And so what the Commonwealth had done was they had conveyed this about 64,000 square feet of land to Tileson and Hollingsworth in 1961. The Tileson and Hollingsworth then conveyed 10,000 square feet to the Commonwealth in High Park to build a VFW post. And then the Tileson and Hollingsworth came to the town, obtained a permit in 67 to build the sedimentation base. And in the 1983, came before the Conservation Commission to build that concrete lagoon, and that was all done by Dresser McKee. And we have all the plans, and I regret not bringing them tonight, but we have all the plans that show all the piping and all the work that was done to that. And even when you look at the exception for wastewater, a water treatment plant is gonna fall into that same category as wastewater. Because what's the process? We're taking water, you're extracting, the debris that's in the water and then you're pumping it out, that's going to be a wastewater treatment plant. No, I, I appreciate the history. My only concern was that we need to be 
consistent. Oh, I, and I, if oh, something I, I, becomes sure, I certainly agree a functioning wetland. I, I just I, want to I, make sure we dot the I's sure, across the We certainly piece. appreciate that. And we wanted to make sure the commission had all of the information to m make their decision. And I, I must say, Mr. Chairman, the LAC permitting specialist did a very good job of putting the information together. Thank you. Right. I, I, I do appreciate I've got it here, but I'll... When did it come in yesterday? <laughs> I, have, I haven't read no, it. I know, <laughs> no, I know, I know. The thickness of that document, most of it is the phase two environmental yes. assessment. 195 again, pages, and it's right. five read, pages on this the, side. Read the, the meat of the matter. It's the, first, the, first, the second page of our report tells you which pages to review in that document. There's <laughs> five of them. The rest of it has to do with Hyde Park across the street. Right. All right. Uh, any other questions, commissioners? About us, members of the public, any questions, comments, suggestions? Yes, come forward and use the microphone and welcome. Hi, my name is Carrie Snyder. I'm with the Neponset River Watershed Association. Um, and I just want to say, in general, we have no objection to the proposal. Um, Ideally, we would love to see you know the the river cleaned up and the dam removed and um, public access uh, there. But um, you know we right now the the site as it is it needs to it, that whole thing needs to come down. Um, it's not safe for the public. Um, I do have a couple of questions. Um, was the, has the sediment or the um, the proposed fill for the lagoon been tested? for contaminants, even though the current owners and previous owners might not have been using it for, for waste. You know, it's been sitting there for a long time. Um, so I'm just wondering if, if, the, set, if, if the bottom has been tested. Are those big piles on the left Yep. Uh, these they right have here? been. There. That, that's what was excavated. That's the soil that was removed from the ground to right. make the void space for the Concrete. Right, but it's been sitting there for, for a while, so I just didn't know if yeah, it's been tested to see. Is that in the record as well? I, I haven't seen uh, the, the recent I, Was that specifically tested? I don't know if that yeah, soil yeah, material well, was it, tested. It, it's tested that whole, on both sides of the boundary. Both sides of the what? Well, our property, that straight line is where our property ends. Yes. But so piles of so fill yeah, go over there to the left. That was, that was removed in 1983 from the property. So. Okay. And so we had no, uh, there was no manufacturing, there's no PCB on the property. The only thing that is PCB on the property is the DCR uh, pull mounted transformer that operates the dam um, has PCBs in it. There's been no PCBs on the property, just the DCR pull mounted transformer. Okay. Is, oh, uh, sorry. So I was just going to say, is, is that testing data in, in the file that we could review? Uh, or we can is it part it. of the phase okay. two? Yeah, I, I believe it's in the phase two. Okay. So, uh, so I can take a look at that sure. at the, at is the that office. in the brick house that uh, abuts the dam with a with a gate to control? That transformer is yes. Right. Yes. It's, it's right near there. Uh, just when you get to the double gate up above, there's a power line that then runs to both gates. So that is the it's the only PCB device and it's owned by DCR. We don't own the dam. Uh, we have uh, repairing rights. We have rights to extract water from the Ponce River. Uh, the rights to cross and recross the dam, but we don't own the dam or any of the equipment associated with the dam. Yeah. So we we just wanted to make sure that you know the the fill material was going to be clean and it wasn't going to be covering up anything that was sure. contaminated and that might get into the groundwater. We, we agree with you 100 yeah. percent on that because okay. there's enough contamination over there. Yeah. Now we go back to one of your questions, though. What are you going to fill it when you break up the, the lagoon? You're going to pull the rebar grate out of there. Pull then the you're going to break up the concrete. What are you going to fill it with? With uh, the soil pile that was used to remove it. You put and, it back. And, and concrete as well. Some also, of the six inches or less, right? Six inches or less, not more. Yes, the concrete will be crushed up into six inch minus. Six inch All the minus. clean concrete, the non coated concrete, and that'll go in there. All the columns and everything holding up those buildings, that, that building. The cantilever section. All that concrete is going yeah, in there. Well, as right. much as we can get in there. Yeah. And that's clean as well. That's right. Okay. 
Yeah, the concrete columns. Yeah, that building was built in 1967. The cantilevered section that we walked underneath? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. okay. Is that good, the filling with the concrete crushed? Yeah, as long as it passes. You know, if there's any sampling requires a foot permit right. associated with it. Well, are the sampling requirements during the demolition? I mean, right now you don't know what, what the concrete's going to test out because it's not been broken up yet. Uh, we, we don't test the concrete. We test, excuse me, we test concrete that has coatings on it, whether it be lit paint or people's or graffiti. Oils, oil it's staining. A, or right. oil or any, any, content, any, any coating of any type. I have to test it and have a BUD done through the the DEP and all that, but if it's clean concrete with nothing, I just crush it up. And with an ABC permit, I put it in the lagoon. All right. Now, there's a, a noise question, and I know you're isolated. I get it. But when we went 131 um, Elliott Street, that was a big issue as to what, how much noise would the crushers make. Is that an issue where you are? Uh, I don't know what the decibel level is, but I, you know, we, had, we had heard horrible stories, but it, 131 Elliott Street seemed to do fine. Is it louder than the train? The, uh, when, when <laughs> the, larger, the larger pieces of concrete that we have to hammer, hammer up and it's done with a hydraulic hammer, it makes a lot of noise. Uh, but it would be walking on a highway over there it would not be bad. If you're next to it, then you're going to wear. Chairman, if I can interject, because right. we kind of had some personal experience. We had owned the Bay State paper mill on the high park side, uh, which was about 350,000 square feet of uh, 19 different industrial buildings. And Rod's firm had done the demolition. And Tony and I had been at the underpass when they were doing uh, all the demolition using impact hammers and we could not hear it in large measure because the noise from the dam itself drowns out a lot of the noise. Uh, there's 59 trains a day from the Fairmont commuter rail that go back and forth. And you, just, you, can't, you can't hear the train when you're at the dam, for example, when it goes by. So we just don't see that there's gonna be any noise issue. The nearest neighbors are about 650, 700 feet away with the thick foliage of screen with the trees. Uh, a lot of that noise is going to be penned in by the trees, and we're not going to have that kind of an issue, I believe. So you are planning on retaining the trees to a well, certain if, extent? If you, if you look yeah. at all the trees south of the commuter rail line, uh, you literally have hundreds of trees that's within there. That, that's all forested. That, yeah, it's thickly forested that uh, provides a deep canopy, so you just can't hear anything. So hurry up and give us a demolition permit before the winter comes. <laughs> so what, what is it? <laughs> what's, what's your time frame? How, how long is it going to take? Uh, four months. Four Maybe. months once we get the license. Once I get a permit the, to start to from the, the MBTA tracks. and the DCR and the town. Uh, and usually the MBTA takes three to four months, two or three months. And DCR is not quite as long. It's taken me twice and that. The town <laughs> usually is 30 is days that? or something in that category. It's taken me twice that to get it from the MBTA. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any other right. uh, questions from commissioners? Thank you very much. You know, Thank you, Kerry. Right yeah. Anything, Steve? Nope. Uh, are there abutters or members of the public that have questions or comments, suggestions? <laughs> I'm surprised. Um, Hearing none, do we have any uh, issues in terms of storage of equipment? I know your staging area nearby the underpass mm -hmm. is outside of the jurisdiction. You've Correct. kept it outside of our jurisdiction, yes, so that's right. good. What Thank about the, uh, the heavy equipment? We've got fueling issues. Uh, we'll need control, uh, spill, spill control plants if you've got equipment in there. Well, uh, will. Is the heavy equipment yeah. going to be moving in and out of our jurisdiction? We'll have a set area that we park the equipment every evening. Right, but where is the set area where we're parking the equipment? Is it in our jurisdiction or out? Within. Yeah, oh, within. within. Is it in the staging area? Inside our property. It's in the staging oh. area. In the property? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then so yes. we need a spill we'll control. Give, we'll give you a spill control plan. Plan. All right. And because we don't want, you know, the closer you get to the river, if you are 
refueling. Uh, if you've got hydraulic lines, as you know, that's a problem. Um, yeah. So I, I would, would like to see on the plan where you're going to keep the equipment overnight. And you're talking four months. That, that's a real concern. Yeah, that close to the river. Um, we know that in this area, we are stockpiling and these two no, areas here? Further a little, oh, further over. Yeah. Further over where? Where the underpass Oh, and here it is. I'm it's sorry. Yeah, I, I was looking at that. It's this one here. Right here. Uh, but you are talking about keeping equipment in this area right yes. here? No. But where? Can you? Can It'll you be in, in the, somewhere within the location of the slab of the building. We try to keep it on the slab whenever we can. Go in here? Yes. Yeah. Um, is that right in here? You've got to get right rid of it first. You've got to knock the building right down there. first. Yes. That so where, where do you store the equipment while you're still knocking the building down? I mean, you can't store the equipment there now because there's a building there. So is this, you know, give us some idea of where this equipment's going to be. You get a ton well, it's, of Well, it's just the walls there in that yeah, location, nothing, isn't nothing it? Nothing yeah, it's, it's, it's just the walls there, right? Yes. We're going to go in there. We're going to take the walls down. We're going to work our way in and sit there, and that's, okay. we'll work all around from that. So first by, the, day. by the first, first day, day, you'll have yeah. a staging area. The, the walls come down, it all depends how big a machine I said. It comes down in minutes or hours. Yeah, okay. first day. It's, yeah. And then they're going to sit there, because I don't want it anywhere close to the river. Right. You know, that's for sure. Okay, I'd like to see a, a pre-construction or pre-demolition meeting with Steve Ivis and you folks. Yes, of course. Um, I'd like to see the spill control plan. Yep. Uh, for approval here yeah, prior to prior to starting. Um, any anything else? Yeah, if you just include in that spill plan what you intend to use for staging or you know where you yep. plan on setting up your crusher. Understand. And, yep. You know where the general equipment layout is going to be. I forget. That would probably be helpful. The, the tough part was the other side. You took that whole yeah. area yeah. down. You know. The other side where the oh, cantilever. The river, the oh, river. oh, sure, I guess. There was there was nice Boston Boston side. I got it. No, I'm, it's easy. I know you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Compare, comparatively. Steve, can you think of anything else that we should add, uh, conditions? I don't have any. No, not at all. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> are there any questions of um, rodents or anything on the property? Are there rats that we have to be concerned about? No, we, we haven't seen anything at nothing all. Nothing like that. So and, and that's is. because there's, there's nothing really there, and it's, there's really no way they can cross the the uh, TNH dam to get over. It's just not. There's nothing to not eat. Say. <laughs> You're right, it's, it's not safe. They haven't figured out how to <laughs> do it once yet. <laughs> that's enough. So. <laughs> I, just one last question. You, you mentioned that you had um, rights to the river for extraction. Right. Have you mapped any pipes or discharges? Oh, one and two. Are you, are they going to? If there are any, are they going to remain in place? We have the plans that show where they are. We have not dug up the ground to identify that they're still there. Mm -hmm. But at, and at the end, the rights are still there. Pardon me? The rights still exist. Right. So, so, so the rights that we have aren't just limited to the location of where the outflow pipes. Correct. We've got repairing rights in general. But our plan would be to cap and close all of those lines. Okay. Obviously not to have anything flood out to the property. Okay. And is that going to be done as part of the demolition? Yes. Or is it? Okay. So we've got a, a split. Uh, one part of this is an RDA, and part of it is a notice of intent. Mm -hmm. Correct? It, yes, absolutely. And generally, the RDA is for access right. through the DCR property. The NOI is actually the demolition itself. Okay. So I'm, I'm comfortable with the lines as drawn, and basically off the bank of the, the Ponset. Um, and I'm comfortable that the staging area here is outside of the jurisdictional line. And we've already talked about staging in this area. Um, the building actually further, further to the uh, yes. to the right, right yes, there. Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay. All right. So, any other concerns? Because we'll have to have two votes. One is an RDA outside, and the other is notice of intent inside. Um, that's and correct. I, any other thoughts, comments? Is there a motion to approve the demolition? Oh, let's take the first one first. This is the. Notice of intent, which is on the river side of the tracks. Uh, is there a motion to approve the demolition 
um, proposal and issue an order of conditions with the conditions that we've discussed. So Steve. moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, is there anything in there if there is uh, any underground gifts that you haven't encountered yet? Um, if you've run into something that's reportable under DEP, under the oh, We would MCP. absolutely notify the okay. Sure. Yep. We do that anyway, but why don't we add that to we'll one it, of the add, conditions? Yes. All right. Yep. With, that, with that addition, yep. any further discussion? All in favor? Okay, good to go on that. Next one is the uh, request for determination of applicability, which is on the Truman Highway side of the railroad tracks. Uh, same conditions. Uh, is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Is there a second? Seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Good to go. Thank you all very uh, much. So, yeah, good luck. We'll, by the way, we'll thanks for an excellent you. site walk. That was oh, okay. very, very thorough. We wish they were all <laughs> thorough. Did you enjoy the deer? Oh, uh, still got some in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arthur. <laughs> That's tough. Awesome. Rank, rank. <laughs> Good resist, John. <laughs> all right, uh, number seven on the uh, agenda is request for modification to order of conditions 151 Woodland Road. Exactly. Let's see. Is that the Deb, is that the correct plan to have up? Can you see that? Is that does that make sense, that plan? Here's, here's the Woodland Road. Here's the proposed house. Is that correct? Yes, it is. It's, it was just upside down for me. So. Understood. <laughs> That's fine. Yep. And here, here's a oh, oh, pointer if you'd like. Perfect. Sure. Good evening. Could you introduce yourselves and uh, give us your presentation? I'm Jack Sullivan. I'm the uh, builder of the house. Keller with Maryland Engineers and Land Surveyors. Uh, yeah, we um, we've been here a few times, and I guess the people here before us. There's been a difficult time locating this house, primarily because of some of the regulations in the building department uh, pertaining to how you measure the height of the building. So, unfortunately, we had to re redesign this and build it right on top of the only piece of big ledge in the place. <laughs> at, of course. At significant cost. Um, in any event, so it's required this uh, modification. Deb was on vacation when we did it the last time, and she came back and realized that we needed to modify it and she'll tell you more about it. Sure. So um, as Jack mentioned, due to the grades and site constraints on the property, the building needed to be shifted. What also needed to happen was um, we went before the planning board last week um, and re requested an, uh, an endorsement for Form A to add a piece of the property from the adjacent property which is this little wedge right here so that we could push the building back and in, in down on this plan um, to locate it appropriately to comply with all um, building requirements well, what that's done from the previous plan is the um, last plan that you received the house was sort of angled like this with grading going farther in here with a retaining wall in the front of the building and then another retaining wall on the back side here. What we've been able to do by moving this uh, house to this location is eliminate and minimize the, the fill that goes along um, 
the edge of the no disturb zone to the wetlands, also pushing the driveway up um, farther away from the wetlands on the property. Um, we did, with this filing as well, provide you with a cut and fill sketch, which shows um, the what's being excavated versus what's being filled. And in, in general, obviously the building will be excavated here and the majority of the fill would be in the front yard in this portion here, matching grade primarily along the driveway. We also provided a blow up. I believe in the last meeting discussion was we wanted to make sure that the driveways were located within the uh, driveway and utility easement. So I've uh, provided an 11 by 17, which shows a, on this plan, it's in red. There's the easement line, and then there's another easement line that comes along here. And that encompasses the entrance, the two 11 foot wide driveways with a six foot wide landscape island in between and the existing utilities that come across this property into the adjacent property, which is 167 Woodland Road. Um, so uh, I, I think in general, those were the major changes that we made since the last time you saw the plan. Yes. Um, I generally, I, I think this is a better plan from a resource standpoint because we are pulling the grading and the, the house away from it's still within the obviously still within the uh, 100 foot buffer but uh, farther away from the 25 foot no disturb and this is again another modification to the existing order of conditions just so you'll have to take two votes mr chairman I think it's a better plan. These things are further away. On this um, blown up plan that you gave us, there's yep. gravel indicated. Is that in the middle of the. Um, that's existing gravel. That's existing. It, that's gravel. existing. Okay. So you're not planning, you're planning to have a strip in the middle that'll be vegetated in some way? That is correct. What will be on that? In What's, the six foot island? Yeah. Um, I would imagine, do you have an idea of what kind of landscaping, or is it uh, grass or shrubs? It'll be a mixture of both. Okay, and, and the cars go over it, so it can't be... No. No, it's no, to the it's side. it's in between the two driveways. One and then the other, okay. It's a planting strip. It's a planting strip, okay. What's the difference between the um, July 30th revised plan and the August 1st oh, revised plan. Um, when we filed the July 30th, uh, Kathy was kind enough to clarify to me, since I wasn't at the last hearing, some of the notes that she felt needed to be on the plan that you had requested, which were specifically identifying, we had given the dimension for the six foot island, but did not label it as a landscape island. So we identified the landscape island and specifically identified the 11 foot driveways so that it was clear that that was the configuration. All right, one of the, one of the things that I'm confused by, which, what plan are we looking at? Can you move this, um, Steve? This uh, is July 30th. I'm sorry. I kept the date July 30th the same and just resubmitted it to replace the first plan due to the fact that there were two minor notes that she, um, Kathy had asked me to add. All right. There, it, originally, the reason I'm questioning is that originally um, there was some controversy over wetlands on the 167 side, which we asked many years ago to make sure that uh, showed up on the plans. It is on the plan um, dated July 30th, but it's not on the plan dated August 1st. And I, and I don't know why. Oh, 
but this is the four main plan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not sure. This is just for to show this parcel here that the, the basically a, a land exchange. Um, I, I can ask the surveyor why they didn't. But this would it's, be the plan you're. Here. This is the plan you're approving. This planning board approved and endorsed right. this form A. So that was just for that land. You understand transfer. the distinction? Because oh, this, this was a hot controversy. Yes. yes. So this this yes. this right here, the Ju July 30th plan, is what we're looking uh, for, for approval, approval okay. from the commission. Mm -hmm. I gave I gave you a copy of the form A just so you knew because the lot line was changing and I so understand. that everybody was on the same page with that. Okay. And you, you had specifically asked and made, made us aware of the issue with the driveways, and you wanted us to clarify the easement so there was no confusion about it, and I think that's... Yes, and I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, so Steve, as long as you know that the plan that, because yes, Kathy plan, usually stamps it's approved, and I don't, don't want to have the wrong plan. Plan of record is the one on, on, on the board there, and one right here. Yes. That is correct. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Uh, any questions? I have yes. one, one more issue that I'd like to bring up. Um, there's, there's a, there's a, the owners of the property, or the potential owners, the buyers, had wanted to cut down a number of trees, and we talked about it, and they marked some. And, and a number of them were inside of the the no build, uh, the no disturb. Um, and Steve went in and reviewed it, and so we agreed that you know we would stay out of that area. However, there is one tree in there, and I can pass that around. That is is coming down. It's a big tree. It's leaning towards uh, where the house is, and. It's the roots are coming out of the ground. It's right in this area here. It's inside the 25 foot Correct. zone, is what you're saying. It's in the 25 foot zone, uh, but while we have the trees being cleared on the rest of the property, I'd like to request that we get be able to. Hold it steady. Be able to uh, take down the tree that's in the center of the picture that I circulated. You can see it, it it's hung up in the trees above it, and the, uh, the roots are coming out on the right hand side of it. It's only a matter of time before it comes down. So, do you understand it's holding it up? Is, it, is this straighter tree? Is that what? It's helping to hold it up, but it, it, it's clearly coming down, and I'd be happy to meet with Steve or whoever, and we can look at the roots, and it's very clear that it, it's a problem. Yeah, I really can't I think tell there are different picture. pictures. I, I would agree with okay. that. These, these aren't the same picture. Right? Which, can you show us which one it is? Yeah. I'm sorry. You really need the whole thing. Uh, it's this one here. Hey, the pictures are a little, a little different. Well, because this is the same picture, it's just in closer. So. But it, it, it's cut. I mean, this tree is this tree, so that tree doesn't exist. I mean, it's, it's I know, out here. We're not asking about that tree. This tree here is the one we're asking about. It's the same as that tree there. Okay. So we're just getting closer, so it will be more evident from, because it is hard to tell. Okay. What what kind of a tree is it? I believe it's a uh, oak. I'm not an oak. It's a. Uh, I think it's in. Looks like an eastern white pine. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Pretty. Pretty obvious to me, at least, if I'm looking at the the crooked tree here, leaning tree. Yeah, it's a white pine. Yeah. He. He said it's this tree. Common name is actually East Town White Pine. This one. Just FYI. I'm going to this. Steve, can you look at it at, yeah. at some point? Maybe? Steve, yeah. check it out. I'd be happy to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's not a problem to look at it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I'm more interested in um, making sure that they stayed outside the limit of work line and that the limit of work line is replaced 
It has been, and I'd, I'd like well, to reach you the area. We can inspect fine. that, and we can sure. look at this tree at the same time. Okay. All right. But if you're within a 25 foot, we'd, we'd be looking for some replantings somewhere? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Three to one. Three to one? Three. Yeah. three inch, three to one. Um, three inch is what was mentioned before. Right. Three inch DBH. Okay. Any questions? Questions? There are any abutters or members of the public that have a question or comment? Uh, we have two votes. And the first one is whether or not this change is a, a significant change or not a significant change. If it's significant, they have to refile a notice of intent. If it's not significant, we can make a revision, which will be the second vote. So is there a motion that, uh, to entertain this proposed revision as not being significant? Second? Okay, any discussion? All in favor of the vote that this is not a significant change and therefore does not require a new notice of intent. All in favor? Done. Second vote is whether or not to approve these changes and issue an order of uh, conditions under a revised order of conditions. Okay, with the condition that if you take down this tree along with your other work, that you plant three new trees and they have to be native Trees. That's right. Okay. With that condition, is there a motion to approve this as a revised order of conditions? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? All in favor? Good to go. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Can I give me a call? Give me a call. Sure. Absolutely. Thank you. I'm safe. Yeah. Next on the agenda is Certificate of Compliance, 422 Brook Road. You ready here for that? Do you know what, what it is? I believe it is the construction of a deck and a concrete patio. I was there today, took some pictures. It looks fine. There was absolutely no impact to Pine Tree Brook, which is directly behind the uh, existing home. There's a grass lawn and then another patio an older patio that was not touched doesn't look like and then there's the brook uh looked look like a nice project done um, do we have a representation that this was built in substantial compliance with the no, we don't. order conditions we, we do not this is all we have is a statement from the homeowners that's right we well our not. standard protocol is to require a that's uh, correct recitation from the architect or engineer or somebody <laughs> that it was done in substantial compliance with the order conditions. Right. Is there any... Do we uh, know what was submitted with the original plan? It uh, was not submitted with any plans. This... Oh, we, we, we don't know. They don't have a plan with this submission. No, I'm saying what was in the, in the NOI submission. Do we have the 422 here? Should be there in the in the pile. Uh, should be in the right. second pile. And just sign a couple of things here. This is for the notice of intent from the highway. see whatever engineer stamp or, or whoever stamped the plan numbers. You get to sign as well. Yeah, that's the Woodland Road one. Just keep these together. JSG Architects. Where's the stamp? Okay. Why don't you take a look at that? I think the reg just 
have them go back to the architect or whatever. If too. someone hires an engineer like this, does it cost them extra to have yes. the engineer oh. come back yes. and yes. do the plan it does? No, no, that's the original. That's this not is, part of this is If there's any engineers in the audience, just that one, so. would you charge for a certificate of compliance? Oh, that's your job. Oh, my God. That's not, that's not <laughs> billable, is it? Those pro bono jobs are few and far between. <laughs> right. So. Oh. D. Don't worry about the second. Uh, can, Steve, can you get back to them? Because you know, yes. we've never varied on that. Yeah. This, this was new to me. I, I, okay. I saw it on the agenda yesterday for the first time. So in, in the, yeah. we, we've got the architect plan here. Mm -hmm. um, and the architect is, again, yeah. J&T, you said? Uh, That's okay. We'll find it. Back you don't, don't need to answer that question now. Yeah, I would just say go back to the engineer of record. Yep. That's in the exactly. the, JSG or, architecture or interior design. A. Sure, yeah. What's that? The only reason I asked was to, to yeah. make a suggestion that they, they go back to whoever they got the plan from. I just hate to give home on his extra expense and expense, but I agree with you, John. We have to be consistent about it. Yes. We have a question in the audience. I have one question. Does the owner conditions require an asphalt plan? Yes. It's a standard condition, actually. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, yeah. it's in the boilerplate. Uh, yeah. It's either a uh, uh, as-built or a statement from an engineer or architect that right. of substantial conformance. Right. So that's, that's actually a requirement of the Wetlands Protection Act as well. It's in, it's in the request form. Right, right. All right, so would you go back to them and see if they can, you can we'll do. organize that? Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Next on the agenda is uh, request for certificate of compliance 118 Forbes Road. Hey, good evening, Bob. Good evening, I'm Attorney Bob Sheffield, and I'm pleased to recommend you to uh, represent uh, Shelley Hoon Keith and her husband, John Keith. I have with me uh, Jim Burke of DeSalle, uh, uh, Burke and Sater and Associates. Um, and uh, we came before you uh, some time ago to uh, get approval for the first uh, and only Fenicular <laughs> and Milton. There hasn't been a flood of them yet, right? And uh, this has not caused a great uh, increase in your workload. <laughs> Um, it's the only one in town, and I think it will be the only one in town for some time. Uh, we have submitted uh, uh, to you as built. Uh, we have uh, s submitted to you uh, a letter from uh, uh, James Burke, who is here tonight, uh, saying that uh, all was done in substantial conformity with the compliance with the uh, uh, out of conditions, uh, and uh, we're requesting your uh, approval uh, for the uh, issuance of certificate of completion. Mr. Chairman, I was there today, took a look at the site. Um, it's very stable down the, uh, down the slope from the, the top of the incline tram pulley system down. Did you ride it? I did not. <laughs> I probably should have. Wise man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you had the key. <laughs> I, I did not have a key. I didn't know I needed a key, but there was there was no one home. I did leave a card at the door, etc. Right. It said why I was there on the card. Um, however, I did notice a little bit of Japanese knotweed right uh, adjacent to the top of the slope. Right it's not at the to be there. at the platform, Mr. Sheffield. That that is true, and the fact of the matter is, uh, we have been told by our uh, wetland uh, scientists that yes. that is going to be a continuing problem so long as the neighboring property, which is just a few feet away, uh, has untreated uh, Japanese uh, nut. 
and uh, we will continue to uh, uh, eradicate that. Uh, however, that is going to be a problem until uh, the okay. people next door eradicate this. I notice your consultant is Seth Wilkinson. Yes. Uh, from the Cape, who is extremely good with understanding the issues. Um, he understands the issue. He's recognized it. He right. indicated uh, what he's doing, and he's also uh, suggested to the owners of the property that they should try and uh, convert their next door neighbor into the need to uh, eliminate the their uh, Japanese nutwood because uh, you cannot uh, eradicate it on one property if they have it next door. I'm doing this from memory, and I, I will look it up, but my memory is that we were concerned with the viewscape, and we asked them to plant some trees, bushes, shrubs. Well, they, they, they created a whole meadow at the... At the top of the slope, there's a wonderful wildflower meadow. Yep. And then down along the slope, there are some shrubs that have been planted. Uh, there are some viburnums. I couldn't tell which ones yep. uh, this time of year. But they go all the way down the slope, and I noticed they have been they have an irrigation system for the shrubs on the slope. I was astounded. Yes. Uh, again, this is from memory, but I think Sandy had agreed to allow plantings on his property. I they heard what you just said have, about oh. have, he allowed to have Next plantings door. on his property, yeah. but he did not allow us to attack the Japanese knotwood, et cetera. Uh, in other words, it was a limited power that Oh, oh I, I understand that completely. Right. I, I'm just looking at this as a certificate of compliance, and I know the, or my memory is that the original plan included plantings over the property line. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that today. And I, I, I didn't know that, first of all. It's not on the plan, secondly. It's not I, on this plan, I know. That's, that's why. Right, what caught my eye, and so I didn't. I didn't notice. I didn't know that was an issue. Uh, so I didn't know to look, even look, on the second property. You remember, Bob, what it says about? Well, I remember that uh, the the tram is located uh, within a few feet. Of, that's that's uh, correct. Uh, of the adjacent uh, and I landowner's did. property, and uh, he allowed us to uh, put uh, plantings so that. It would hide the funicular from um, the uh, Lynch property and from the uh, uh, the, the wharf, uh, which has the uh, the boat, uh, so that uh, that that was the purpose of it, and they were put in. I, I did take some pictures, and I'm sorry, the camera's out in the van. But there were there were some plantings on the on both sides of the funicular. Notice that. Yes. Both sides. But I didn't note how far they extended off to the uh, it would have been the westerly side. The invasive number forty six, the invasive species present on the coastal bank slope shall be removed by hand and all new plantings shall be maintained. I heard what you said, Bob. I'm not, and I know no, how I difficult understand. it, it yep. is. It, next year you don't get. And just for your information, we're coming upon the season to treat Japanese knotweed right about now, until about the end of September. The herbicide treatment, that is. So the, a landscape plan was submitted to the commission for its review and approval. Said plan shall include native species. The planting shall include native shrubs to be planted on the adjacent lot currently owned by Mr. and Mrs. Sandy Will, 106 Forbes Road, who have given permission for such plantings. Correct. Sorry, I didn't look at the didn't look at the order. Well, I think if the Japanese knotweed is still there, it's not in uh, substantial compliance. You'd have to wait until it's been eradicated or cut down or treated, and then it would be maybe.
Bob, will you have the landscape plan? I, I don't see it. I don't have it with me, but we submitted it to the uh, commission. I, I know you did. Approved. And uh, the most important uh, ingredient of it was the meadow. Um, and um, the owners of the property uh, uh, were uh, very meticulous in uh, creating the memo, which was the desire of the uh, concord. It's very, very uh, dense, the meadow, the meadow plantings. Have you, have you been there recently? I have not, no. I, was, I, I would suggest that, uh, that uh, the existence of some uh, Japanese not word, which is uh, being uh, uh, attacked and will be continued to be attacked until you know such time as it is eradicated, uh, uh, should not uh, eliminate the possibility for issuing a certificate of compliance. I would like to see the Japanese not weed out. Out of where? Out of at least this property. That's clarification is important. Sure, yes. absolutely. Yeah. yeah, that's just my my recommendation to the commission. No offense, but I, I guess my mind is trying to separate out this issue, which I can understand clearly, in the approval that's requested that's before us, which did not, to the best of my recollection, include the removal of invasives. It, it did, John just read, I just read it. Yes. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was read it. Exactly. specifically Number. the Japanese not word or No, no, no. Invasives. Any invasives? invasives yeah. 46, Number four. the invasive 46. species present on the coastal bank slope shall be removed by okay. hand and all that new is. planting shall be maintained. Good. So then that takes care of that. Right. Yeah. Just got it. Sorry, I had to distract it. Oh. No, oh, it's a clarification action. So I, I, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not sure what the consensus is here. I'm, I'm comfortable that the structure itself was properly installed. I'm yep. comfortable that the meadow was properly installed and looks healthy. Yes. Um, yeah. You've indicated that there were plantings. I know you didn't. You weren't aware of the property line, but you right. said, pursuant to number forty-eight, that they would be uh, have shrubs, native shrubs, to be planted on the adjacent lot by uh, Sandy Wills property. Um, are you comfortable, Bob, that those were planted on that side? Yes, they were. Yeah. The reason I'm asking is because I know at one time that slope was barren, and yes. the folks at forty-four Wall Street that include the president of the Garden Club. <laughs> not happy <laughs> um, <no. laughs> with, with John and Shelley's neighbor, not, not them. Um, and that, that was then replanted. So it became an issue as to what they could see. And that's actually why we said, can you give us some more cover? And, the, and that's why we planted them on that side, side of, the, of the tram, so right. that, uh, that the, the visibility would be, if not eliminated, it would be reduced. And uh, we did that, and we created the meadow, and we uh, did everything within our power to uh, uh, remove the invasives. Uh, well, in looking through the file, um, uh, I am looking at a letter dated January 24th, 2018, from Kelly Knight at uh, Wilkinson Ecological Design. Yep. And the title of it is 2017-2018 Invasive Plant Management for Funicular Corridor. So obviously they're engaged in that process. Yes. And it's, it seems to be an ongoing battle. I, I don't, <laughs> it's a never ending battle. So I'm um, not sure that we can, can hold up. It can be eradicated from locations. We're doing a good job of it over at the Naval Air Station in South Weymouth. So what is your suggestion with issuing the certificate of compliance? I would I would wait until it's off this property. Oh, there's okay. only there's only a small amount really left. Let, let me ask for another clarification. Sorry to be doing this, but it's in the vehicular path that was discussed, it's, right? It's actually a, just adjacent to the platform at the top of the slope. And there's only an area six foot eight foot diameter 
really. There's only a few plants left. I would, can we issue this with the condition that that be removed? I think so. Oh, you? Well, I would not, so that's just Okay, my no, no, we're trying to look for a consensus. That's my position. It is part of the order. If it's, if it's there, then maybe we and should if wait. If it's there and it's not treated, it'll double in size by next year. And that's then the right. Next year it'll well, the size. fact but, is, we've, we've had uh, professionals working at it. They're continuing to work at it, and, and they will And their sign is still on the property, the professionals. Well, that's, their, that's their my point. I, I think we could issue a conditional approval because right. of the fact that we've got demonstrable proof that they've, they've got somebody on board doing it. Um, if we wait until they take it out, let's say they take it out in the next month, um, how do we know it's not going to come back next year? But what I, I think what's the seating? On what's in front of us. No. Uh, most, most of the time it, it, it travels by underground rhizomes okay. rather than seeds, okay. most yeah. of the time. It's rhizomes. Like Phragmites. Like Phragmites, very similar. It, uh, Bob, is there any uh, time sensitive issue here? Is, is it, you know? Well, it's just that we have the funicula, we've done everything we can. The meadow is in perfect condition very that nice the shape. Conservation Commission requested. We'd like to have this behind us. Not that we're going to eliminate any work in the future. But it's just a, a time point of having it uh, how, how about this? To the extent that Steve has identified a, a relatively small yep. area that could be done, I'm certain, within the next month. Yes. Um, yep. If you could take, Steve, if you could take a, a look when you, when you get, give him a call, Perfect. you go out, and then we can vote on it. You don't even have to show up. Excellent. We can put it on the agenda for the 17th of September. Yes. If you confirm that it's done, then we're done. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. All right, well, thanks. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. 700 Canton Ave. Yeah. Number 10, right? Okay, next on the agenda is Certificate of Compliance for 700 Canton Ave. Ron? Good, uh, good evening. Jim Burke, uh, uh, representing the client for uh, certificate of compliance for 700 Canton Ave. Um, you have the, uh, what I believe is the proposed plan uh, that was done in 2012. Uh, on the screen right now. Um, we've done, uh, found we did a foundation as built, and then as far as what was constructed after that foundation, we can't verify uh, a number of things that were approved on that plan. Uh, no, so we cannot. Cannot. Right. Um, there is a, uh, an interceptor trench that ties into an existing catch basin that we couldn't verify was there. Uh, there's a rain that's, garden. That's this, this right here. Right. This trench right here. Um, the rain garden is right here. It did not uh, appear to be constructed. I was there today yeah. looking for it. With the owner, the current owner. The current owner. Right. Uh, we have 700. Mergewood. Remember, the, remember Merge. Mergewood? You were here. No. Of course. Mergewood <laughs> is, is the, uh, just from, the, from, from here, uh, going, it's on the left, just before the Indian Trail uh, triangle. Indian Trails triangle. I think it, if you it's you two parks on your right, then you go down to maybe about 200 feet. It's right. like it's, private drive on the left. It's two houses from Indian Trails, that whole Indian Trails. Indian Springs? Indian Springs. Oh, oh sorry. Okay. This, this side of This it. side of it, that's correct. Where we are right now, this side. Okay. Yeah. For sale, isn't it? Well, it was just No, it was sold. They, oh, they, sold. It's already sold. And they have the, the, the new owners that are there. Are, Okay. The people that are requesting the certificate of compliance were the previous owners. Right. So there were a couple of things that weren't complete. I didn't or, notice a huge issue with regards to uh, the interceptor trench as far as like, uh, like a, any sort of erosion on property. Um, there was no erosion that I detected on property. None whatsoever. Right. Yeah. Uh, the rain garden, however, it's was a not there. House or it was not. Uh, there are the. 
there was a driveway that was proposed onto yes. onto Canton Ave that also wasn't constructed and it was constructed right. onto Mergewood. That's correct. Goes directly onto Mergewood. Yeah. And let me uh, bring up. I will bring up the uh, other plan as well. Okay, that's ten B. Oh, cool. That's the plan that you. That's the as built. Yeah. Yes, there's the as built. It was there a few hours ago. Yeah. I mean. Was the actual nice, address? They're Canada? a nice piece of property. Yeah. Is the actual address? Canada? Seven seven hundred yes. Canton yeah. Ave. Yeah. Yeah. That's the address. That's correct. I think we permitted it as six eighty four Canton Ave. Yes, that's what it was permitted as. Mm -hmm. So the driver was modified without. Correct. Okay. Without any requests. Where's the driveway? It goes out to, to Mergewood. If you if you look uh, right behind you. You can kind of see the, the driveway drive. instead is, of instead is, of traveling. It's yeah. is this yeah. way. It's right in here. So it doesn't look like there was any sort of um, going out that way. On-site drainage that was approved with the notice of intent um, installed. Yeah, right across the bridge, we, we did some work on that property too. Okay. Um, I can't remember the. Yeah, that this is it. Across from Merchwood. Sideways. On yeah. Canton, yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry, can you go back over that? Because I'm sorry, I did not do my homework on this one, Jim. That's so okay. Can you just tell me what you can't verify? I, I, there, if, uh, there's a, there was a uh, interceptor trench that was uh, designed. There was, if you recall, this piece of property, and actually the one next door, there's a lot of surface runoff. Um, the soils are, are uh, uh, limited. I don't think there's a groundwater per se issue. I think it's just runoff coming from the uh, Blue Hills direction mm -hmm. uh, that uh, kind of runs over the surface. So and, it was, wasn't there a conduit that runs under this? Because we did a yes. lot of work on this property here. Yes, there is a conduit that uh, that runs wait, into wait, it. Wait. That conduit, I think, John, is if, uh, like in a low part of Mergewood, um, uh, kind of right at the, the interceptor trench. Is that it there? No, up. Right. Other way. This Bunch way? Bunch of left. Yeah, that right there. All right, yeah, okay. I think that's the, the uh, and we were concerned. I think the concern was that this, the grading might, and, and this is me going back seven years, um, that there was a concern that maybe there was going to be an overtopping of that particular culvert. So there was an interceptor trench put there. I haven't seen any evidence of that either. Um, so oh, an interceptor trench. Yeah. Well, for that matter, any sort of overtopping of merge wood or uh, uh, anything of that nature. Uh, I, as far as impacts to the the wetlands, uh, which are located on the opposite side of merge wood, I couldn't confirm any of that either. All I can tell you is is that. Uh, uh, the property was constructed not necessarily uh, well with the exceptions uh, that are listed under uh, uh, that are listed on the plan. And I did take a look on the opposite side of Mergewood as well because it was down gradient. Right. I didn't see any channels or anything coming from Mergewood into the wetland area. Yeah, I, I personally don't think the construction. Uh, the, well, uh, the fact that this lot's been in here for seven years now, or maybe. You know, five years, or maybe it took a couple of years to build. I don't see a significant amount of impacts uh, generated from how it was constructed, um, but of course, it doesn't necessarily comply with the approved plan. Uh, is this um, pending a sale? No, sold. Uh, there's, sold. There's money in escrow. I asked the question. Yeah. Oh, you didn't? Okay. I, did. I did not know that. Yeah, because it's it's not it's not often we have an engineer come in and say, I can't I can't verify this. Right. Uh, that that's, that is an issue. That's what I told the owner today. It it might be worth a site walk. I mean, I'm just I would take a peek. I I I'd personally look at it and 
and uh, uh, I find the lot stabilized uh, mm -hmm. without significant uh, environmental impacts associated with stormwater associated with it. So, uh, but I certainly would defer to your review and comment. So, Jim, did you say there was supposed to be a rain garden on the corner? Yeah, and right at the corner of Merge Wood and Canton Ave. Okay. And why didn't they um, build that? I, I couldn't tell you. Uh, we, we, we got as far as the foundation as built, and that was the extent of our involvement. So you have not filed any kind of a letter saying yay yeah or nay? Yay yeah or nay on? On substantial compliance. There, there was a, no, I did not, but I did, there, there's a statement uh, on the plan, the uh, upper right-hand corner. Yeah, the right. That uh, basically says uh, it, it's in general compliance with the following exceptions. Right. <laughs> Unusual situation. It certainly is. This is a first for me. Same here. I've seen it before. Very green spill of property line. Connected to existing terms service. More than this per road trigger. So they didn't. Do any of the stormwater stuff. Right. It's all stormwater stuff. And I was told today that the previous owners lived there for five years. And now it's owned by a, a new party. Right. But there is money in escrow. Yes. Because, I mean, I'm just looking at if the we told them to put in a rain garden, they didn't put it in. <laughs> right. That's what I said. I said, in and my comment to them was, Keep the money in escrow. Yeah. And was the driveway, in fact, reduced by 100 square feet, do you know? Actually, I did check that. I did check that. The, the, the fact that it was re removed, to answer your question re quickly, yes. Okay. Um, from uh, since it was removed, uh, making the length to uh, Canton Ave and, and shortened up to going to Mergewood, mm -hmm. and there's a square foot difference. And this says there's a 500 foot difference. Oh. Even with, even with that large turnaround area yeah. for the three-car garage? I can check that number again. I did yeah. check it quick. It, it was a pretty large it's area. A, it's a big driveway. Yeah, and, and parking. Why don't we take a look? Site walk? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, this Saturday? I can't do this Saturday. I can do the following Saturday. What's the date on the following Saturday? 24th. No, I won't be here. I'll be in California. On the 24th? We could do Labor Day. <laughs> <laughs> what else are you going to be doing? <laughs> I'll be in Europe. Yeah, I Labor Day. can't do the 17th. I could do the 24th, and you can't, right, John? Right, I cannot. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, I'm Pretty open. Arthur? I'm trying to check my calendar. I'm having a, I've got a work issue. So. And I can't do Labor Day. I could do the 7th. 7th? September 7th? I'm gone for the first two weeks in September. World travel. I know. He is. <laughs> Sorry. Um, That's okay. I'm jealous. If we have a quorum, I'd What's that? If we have a quorum, I'd like to try and keep it in August. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know the property, so I can do the 17th. I cannot do the uh, 24th. 24th. Can you, Jerry? Are you <laughs> around the 17th to... or the 24th? Sidewalk. No. 24th, no. We could do it later no. tonight. <laughs> Under the lights. Exactly. 17th? 17th to the 24th, I'm on vacation, rented a cottage. Oh, both, both, both Saturdays? Both ends, yeah. Oh. Well, unless it's early, early in the morning on the 17th. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. I can do that. <laughs> okay. So we lose one. Hans, you can do it, you can do it, I can do it. Arthur, can you do the 17th? I'll try. I cannot do the 24th. Uh, family baptism, 17. I have a family commitment, but I'll try and get around it. But I can't. It, it won't be long. No. No. Yeah. Ten minutes, literally. 
Right. Eight o'clock, the seventeenth. Okay. Okay. And I know you can't make it. Okay. What time again? Eight. Eight o'clock. But we'll, we'll be in, in and out of there. It's right up by the Guile Road, right across the street from the high school entrance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Judith, you're welcome to go and check check it out. Yeah. Independently, certainly. Yeah. Are you going to be there, Jim? Uh, actually, probably not. Uh, I, I get. Uh, but someone will leave there from my office, certainly. Okay. Um, and can, now, um, are the new owners? Yeah, that was Lawrence and Elizabeth Rooney. Uh, no, know. they are the old owners. The new owners are. Yeah, I don't. Are. I don't know the gentleman's name, but I know the woman's name. Do you have a contact number? I do, and her email as well. Excellent. Okay. Can you contact her and just say that we'll be there? I'd on, be happy to. It's uh, the name Saturday. is Sharon Johnson. Okay. The new owner. Okay, Sharon Johnson. And I have her email and phone number. So I'll be happy to contact. Okay. And would you talk to would you talk to Kathy tomorrow morning? Because we want to make sure we get a public notification in yes. on time for this Saturday. You don't have any other locations, is that correct? Right. That's it. So we'll be getting out of it. Sure. Okay, that's great. Good. Anything else? Any other comments, questions from the public? All right, we'll uh, continue this until Saturday the 17th at 8 a.m. Thank you. Nice. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, Notice of Intent 693-711 Randolph Avenue. Yep. And It'll be 10 minutes, aren't it? Luckily. You got one? I got one. I got a letter. <laughs> okay. Better save the stamp. <laughs> and uh, Steve, can you see if you can find me any stationery? I, I don't have any stationery. I, um, sure. I just printed that off the printer. You don't have to read it now. I'll, okay. I'll tell you. Yeah, no, no, I'll, appreciate I'll tell you what's this. In this it. is, you know, that's great. All right. So for the public's benefit, uh, this is the uh, Notice of Intent 693-711 Randolph Avenue. Um, and this is a project that's actually been longstanding before this commission and it's been held in abeyance for quite a while because of appeals and reappeals and, and whatnot. Uh, and on, I think the letter is dated the 25th of July, uh, Mr. Holland sent to me a letter asking for the scope of work and I apologize, sir, to you because I was delayed in sending you a letter which I just handed to you. Um, and what it says is, and I'm going to try it again, because with my letter, I sent a copy of the uh, Massachusetts statute, which is Chapter 44, Section 53G, and it, it authorizes us as a, a conservation commission to retain consultants um, at, the, at the cost to the applicant, uh, to retain consultants to advise us in terms of evaluating proposals and uh, this is not a peer review. I, I can't say it enough. I think I've said it at every public meeting since 2014. Peer review is different. The planning board does it. The ZBA does it. They bring in consultants to look at the work that's been submitted. This is a different statutory authorization to bring on a consultant to help us in areas of expertise that we perhaps don't have. So I'm sure that the consultant will look at things that you've submitted and pay, pay close attention. But the, re, the purpose of the statute is allow us to bring on board expertise that we need to assist us, irregardless of what the applicant's experts say. Um, so they're going to take a brand new de novo approach and say, this is what we're looking at and, and help us in that vein. That's the statute. I've referred to it a lot, not peer review. Um, OK. So, we acknowledge and I put in the letter, and the statute actually says that uh, you can look at our proposed retained expert slash consultant, mm -hmm. and if they don't meet the minimum uh, qualifications, and you can actually appeal, but obviously it, it, the minimum qualifications are pretty low. Um, but that's not the issue. And it also, uh, I acknowledge that uh, these are reasonable fees that we can allocate to you. So we're not trying to 
make this expensive for you. We'll, we'll find somebody that will advise us. And we've got two areas that I'd like to address. One of them is the hydrology. And um, well, I think you just came in. Um, but earlier tonight, we had a guy whose house show was here. Yeah, show the picture. And Jim, you might have missed it, too. Yeah. But we had a young fellow whose house is right next to the DPW yard. Oh, I, I just walked in on that. OK. Yeah. <laughs> That's his garage or basement or something. It's, it's, there are a bunch of pictures there. So that goes back to, I don't know, 2005, somewhere around there, where we had another proposal uh, for a, a, a plan, uh, a project in the same area, on the same site. And we had neighbors bring in pictures of them in canoes uh, in back of that house at Mr. Well, well, yes. Was here. Yes. Uh, that's that's the same house. That's the same area where people were in canoes. That, there's a lot of water there. So we've always been concerned with uh, flooding and mounding and and what sure. not. And we, we'd also like to take a look at. Um, and I understand when you can use alternatives analysis. I, I get the whole five thousand square feet, but I think we're entitled to look at. Is there a better way to do this? And that's we've always talked about for the last five years. We've talked about the potential for a concrete plank bridge on piers to allow more water to go rather than having the, what I anticipate is a potential for mounding, that is the increase in water, because of the limitations of a culvert. Okay. It's, it's just, it's, it's a different way of looking at it. We need some advice in that area. That's number one. Number two, we need some advice on whether or not the plan to construct the roadway is actually constructible. Okay. I recognize the means and methods belong to the contractor, but you're asking a lot from us uh, as amateur armchair engineers to say that you've only got two feet of extra space to drop a wall and presumably with footings, uh, particularly for the abutment that would include the culvert. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about soft soils that I'm sure are going to collapse. Now maybe you can put in sheathing or something to keep that, but I don't know how you're going to maintain a two foot fringe Understood. Beyond the, the building, because you've got to cut trees, you've got to get equipment in there. And I think, uh, again, I'm not an engineer, I, but I don't know how you're going to do that, short of magic, to just cut a line two feet away from your road or your sidewalk. So we need a, either a structural or a civil engineer to provide um, uh, some guidance to us. Uh, and we're not looking at, you know, we're not trying to you know, prejudge this or come in with a, you know, a set plan. Mm -hmm. just, I know I need advice. I don't know how you do that. And I know sure. that you both said that it can be done, that, that there is at least a conceptual way of doing it. But we need some practical advice as to whether or not you can actually do it. And, and I think it might, actually might help you because if you get halfway through the plan as proposed and, you know, your wall collapses and now you're outside the two feet, you've got a 5,000 foot issue that might require a meeper and... But that's where we need advice. So that's the second area. Now, I know there's some, there's some concern here in terms of whether or not the increased traffic is going to have an impact on quality of water, quality of air. Because I, I understand that traffic may not be within our jurisdiction. I, I get it. Mm -hmm. But if there's a tie-in to that, and I, I, I'm putting this on the table for discussion. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not convinced it's jurisdictional for us. Mm -hmm. um, Unless somebody could come in and tie the increase, I don't know, if you've got, uh, what, 155 parking spaces and what is it, how many car trips per day? Yeah. I, uh, I don't know whether or not that would have an impact on the resources that we protect. I, I honestly don't know. Well, the only tie-in would be relative to the stormwater standards. And so hmm. I would... Traffic tying into, or you're talking uh, about oil dropping under the parking lot? No, line, just the review of the design relative to um, the, you know, whether it's defined as a land use of higher potential pollutant load or, or anything like that. So that's one of the one of the definitions under the stormwater standards. So that would be the tie-in. So if we have the uh, regulatory review include the stormwater standards, that would that would be sufficient. That may address that. All right, because in the letter that I sent to Mr. Holland, I only put in uh, the engineering component and the hydrology component. I, I purposely did not add that because I wanted to put it out for discussion. Because well, uh, I don't know the, I, you may have just answered it. If the pollutant load is going to impact on if, the stormwater I think if, if we just, uh, if we have 
the review include uh, compliance with the stormwater standards uh, define whether or not that part is in within our purview or not if, if that's the tie into the traffic I mean we you know we, it would be the only yeah I, I mean I can certainly see that and uh, um, and and we can produce the the, the peer review done by um, uh, Scott Turner and um, Janet Bernardo is as testament to how it meets the stormwater standards but I do like the fact that you know we have the letter finally and also uh, I, I think I finally understand what you're talking about John with regards to it's not a peer review if you're asking somebody to come in here and actually look at the application that's in front of you and define how this complies with the Wetlands Protection Act then that I understand yes that's fine I mean, because honestly, I can sit here right now and tell you that it does, in my opinion, of course. Uh, you know, so and as far as the constructability of the uh, the wall, the the culvert, uh, we discussed that, and we thought that was a reasonable request as well. I'm just happy that uh, you know we have the letter and we can proceed forward with regards to how we were going to address it, and uh, meet back with you guys later on. Well, I think at this point we. We also need to have the, the proposals. Once you get these proposals, we'll, we'll be able to take a look at those proposals. Am I hearing that correctly, John? Yeah, because I, I, I'm not, we're not trying to spring somebody on you. I, I, I have no idea who you we mean should a use. proposed uh, company that will be doing the engineering with company a, with that will be doing the work. That's, yeah. Yeah. That's with, with, a, with a scope. No, I, I agree on that. And that, uh, from your perspective, I no. just want to also read, read this and digest it thoroughly. You know, right. I know it took breeze through quickly. And... Oh, it's perfectly understandable. Um, and I apologize again for the delay in getting it to you. What's your view on whether or not uh, this stormwater pollutant load and the hydrology study, is that one person or is that two? No, I honestly think, I think as far as finding uh, uh, a technical expert with regards to uh, how a project complies with the Wetlands Protection Act and the stormwater standards. That is, I mean, it can be several people, uh, civil engineers come to mind, um, you know, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I can, it's a very kind of, um, the way the, the report and the information is prepared and how, how uh, the peer reviews have been uh, performed and the revisions to the plans and the calculations have been established. I think it'll be an easy path for anybody to follow and provide you uh, guidance with regards to how you would like to proceed. So, uh, as far as you can, you know, you can go back, you, you know, you can use the people that have already reviewed the project, which might be helpful. Uh, as far as the list goes, you know, is there a list of individuals? There's, there's no, there's no okay. list of you know, but as far as uh, the construction of the bridge, um, engineers are certainly helpful. I think I probably would so, go so. with a, a, a contractor, a construction manager, if you will, and, and see how he would, he would attack it um, and make sure that it, that complies with the Wetlands Protection Act and uh, uh, erosion control and uh, construction standards and the like. Um, but, you know, I think after Paul and I have a chance to review this, this letter, I think our response may include some suggestions of that like. So um, I think, you know, the fact that we have this letter now, I think allows us to kind of uh, move forward in a, in a quicker pace. Okay. Uh, I, <clears throat> with respect to the uh, importance of getting the information. Yes, sir. The letter just came. You just received this letter today. Yeah. But this information was given to you last month. John quoted the statute, called for it. You weren't here. The month before, he went through the whole thing. And you kept, even when, it was, when he was done speaking, I think, I think I remember you mumbling or saying quietly, peer review. So it's been clear and unequivocal, at least as far as I'm concerned, that this is not new news. All right. So, I, and I just want to point out that the letter that you said about the need for this letter is fine with getting to the particulars, but as far as it 
being asked for several months ago and being ironed out. I thought we did that last month, but that's just my opinion. But I, I just want the record to reflect that. Well, I, I guess I disagree with that. Right from the very first meeting here, we, uh, we were expecting and, and the board had talked about giving us a proposed scope. There was a lot of items that were kicked around, traffic studies, other things. That's what we were looking for. That's what we asked. We came in multiple meetings requesting that. I don't think it's an unreasonable request. All right. I think we need to, you know, I don't want to slow it down by putting it out to a bid project. We've done it before, and usually we just come up with a, you know, a few different names and then you see what their, you know, see what the cost is going to be. And we're sensitive to cost. We're not trying to drive the price up for you. I know, I know your soft costs have been pretty substantial over the last six years. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a lot. Um, so I think we can move pretty expeditiously. Any word now on, on the appeal status? Uh, are we still talking a year, or does anybody know? Um, no, I think there's a, I, I actually don't know the date off the top of my head. I, I think it's in the uh, late fall. OK. All right. Um, and I, I don't mind doing this in, in public session. I mean, uh, we could probably do it in executive session, but I, I don't mind doing it in public session. I mean. Are there any suggestions for uh, hydrologists or um, stormwater experts or engineers? We could get solved with a town engineer. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, and, and if you have suggestions, I know you're gonna say they've already done it, so I just read this. <laughs> But, but well, we're no, looking for somebody independent, honest. Yeah, and, and, I, and it's a lot of information to take in. I mean, the, the file is pretty substantial. So to have someone to uh, kind of start at the beginning and get the history for it and, and understand the end result, um, you know, you, you'll need somebody that's experienced in, in uh, uh, civil engineering design and, and permitting. So uh, I know several. Well, so, can you get a yes. list to, to Steve? Yeah, and absolutely. I, I and I'm have, sure Steve knows several too. Uh, uh, yes, more than several. But I, I need to be able to select a good a good person who's got some experience. I have no problems working with Steve Iverson to develop on a list to, that sure. to, would be more than you know, that, why, qualified. Why, why don't we make that our next step? You guys get together and come up with a list. Yeah, aren't we obligated to put it out to bid? Um, I don't think we have to do it in sort of the official state uh, bid capacity, which is pretty detailed. What we've done in the past is, uh, in fact, we did it with you and, and Lenore White and yes. somebody else. This is before Steve was working for us. Right. And I think there was a third person. And mm -hmm. we, got, uh, we did it up at uh, 1131 Randolph Avenue. Yes. Yes. You won the bid. I, I did. So, yes, <laughs> we're pretty careful about that, about how we do it, but it's not... I don't think it necessarily follows the state um, jumping through the hoops. You had to do a lot of things. But we try to put it out there, get the best price for sure. the, the and lowest the, and responsible bidder. Exactly. And also the best approach. There's, there's price, but there's also approach. Yes. You know, so you've got to look at that as well, at least in my opinion. All right. So I'm since, comfortable with, it, with, with you guys working together. Consulting? Yes. I would love to. That's, that's probably one or two on my list. Who was that? John Chessia. Yes. He does a lot of work for a lot of towns and very good work. Okay. And from the engineering side? Or? Yes, from the engineering. Okay. Particularly with stormwater management. He's excellent and detailed. All right. So the list is started. Yeah. I'll, do you know John Chessier? Um, very well. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I understand the answer. Yeah. I don't. Very well. Okay. <laughs> All right. I used to work with John back in the day. Oh, you did? Okay. Before or after you worked for the? After I worked for the town. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Any, anything else? Any other questions? Is, can we do anything else to move this forward? No, I think uh, we're going to digest this letter and, and uh, sure. we'll get right back to you. Okay. I'll uh, pick up the phone to Steve before he goes off to who knows right. where. Right. Other places Horrible. in the world. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. All right, good. All right, with that, we, we should have something. In. We can, sure. Let's do you continue, want to put it on for the month? Continue or? the 17th. If we need more time, I'll, ask, I'll write Kath a letter for extension. Fair enough. Okay. Okay, good.
Thank you. Sure. Thank you all. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Good night now. I think you like that suggestion, which is good. We do have I, some I additional. I've never worked with John Chesky. I've never worked directly with John Chesky, but I know him well. I haven't either, but I've worked opposite him many times. Yeah, and he's an excellent he's been, engineer. He's been a worthy opponent. I'll, I'll, I, I'll say that. He's a very good engineer, very thorough. How, how do you spell his last name? C-H-E-S-S-I-A. John? Yeah. Yes. From he actually lives in situate. All right. Uh, number twelve is additional business. Yes. Uh, one thing very important. You signed. Uh, I guess it was a um, determination of applicability or a notice of intent for two fifty one Canton Ave last month. They have finally been issued their file number. So <laughs> Kathy wanted to make sure that we spoke about it before we closed the public hearing on it. That's all. Um, so you, you what, just... What's the project? 251? 251 Canton Ave. And frankly, I simply don't remember it. Anybody else? That's Glover School. I mean, right near it. Clo close to there. Okay. It must have been yeah. last month. Is it the house right next to like George Hurd's? Yes, George Hurd's that's house? the one. That's the one? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I know what it was now. 251 Canton, was that was that uh, close to Pine Tree Brook as well? Oh, it backs up to Pine Tree it Brook. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course, of yes. course. Yeah. yeah, that was the one that they were just putting on an addition. Yes, uh, and it's over... right next to the Glover School. It's the first exactly. one. Exactly, additional over an existing deck. No, no... Uh, further intrusion into into the yard. And that was the yard that actually goes up in the back before it goes down again mm -hmm. toward the brook. Okay. Right. So that was a determination of applicability, I think, that you signed. There was a, finally a number or something assigned okay. to it. That's all. But did we already sign it? I believe I you already. I think we did last month. Yes, yes. you already signed so, it. Oh, so we did, we're just waiting for the DEP number to catch up. That's correct. Okay. Oh, okay. So, so I'm so just letting you know. Anything. Okay. okay, sorry okay. about that. Um, I, I should tell you that there's been yet another hiccup. Uh, this is also for the, uh, the citizens of Milton. There's been another s delay in the 131 Elliott Street project. That's the former Hendry's oh, building. No. Okay. They, they, we had to go through a series of uh, monitoring well tests. And what they do is they look for a light, non-aqueous phase liquid lighter than water floating on the in the monitoring wells and uh, evidently in one of the monitoring wells which is the middle one on the north side adjacent to the tram uh, they found some one inch two months ago a month ago they found three inches and then three inches wow yeah and then and then that's a layer then that's last a, week they found a foot last week they found a foot Really? A foot? Yes. Is there wow. a shallow bedrock there? Yes, there's shallow bedrock. That's exactly right. And so what it is, it's around the bedrock, and evidently they found some I-beams as well. Oh. So the I-beams or something, something underground was, was you know, it was a travel channel. Oh, yeah. right. exactly. Have they done a GPR there? I, I don't know. I didn't ask the question, but okay. I, I think they finally did. Oh, but nice. if you go there today, you'll see a huge excavation at that well okay i was there and in fact the lsp on site or does the lsp he or she just was make on a... site this morning when i spoke with him yes he was on site this morning so how much will this delay the, um, the... hard for me to say it depends on the yeah. the risk has to be rewritten uh -huh. by mr lagoyer i spoke to him as well and then the ram plan has to be rewritten so they're hoping to get it all done by September 1st, but I was told by the LSP, that's really short time. He yeah. said maybe a month from now is more probably more... Um, a Pockets. Exactly. That's exactly correct. Exa yes. It happens all the time. It's not, it's not anything unusual. Um, they just decided, yeah, they had to go after it rather than leave it. They had to when, when they found that much of it. A foot of product? Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. 
And so they don't, they haven't been doing any active extraction or have they pumped out from those wells? Are they using them as extraction wells or are they? I don't know, the, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll hear about the methods. But I, I will tell you that the, there was some groundwater in the hole and it did not look like there was any sheen on top of the groundwater in the hole today. Uh, I was sort of surprised. Uh, we don't know whether they mixed it up, you know, before they left. Who I knows? I wonder what, what that's, initiated that's, the movement of the... Good question. Yeah. It might have been putting the wells in. You never know. Yeah. Because they had some equipment. Yeah, but it's surprising over time to have that increase. That much. Yeah. I agree. What's the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. what, what made it mobile? Right, and take a look at the hole. <clears throat> there's a there's an area of dark um, material in the hole as well, uh, on the side of the hole. Is there gravel? Pardon? Is there gravel in the edge as well? Yes, there's gravel in the edge of what, as well. In, in the hole, like in yes. the excavation, if you yes. look down there. Yes, and it's dark and it's, it's gravel. gravel layer? I don't think, I didn't see a layer, I couldn't, you couldn't see layering. Okay. Couldn't see layering. But anyway, uh, so that's, it's just going to be delayed. Okay. Um, let's see. You have something in the in your your packets uh, from the Milton historic historic folks. I'm oh, sorry, I don't think I have it's a. It's addressed to the historic society. Right. Some friends of Blue Hill Parkway. Friends of Blue Hill Parkway. Exactly. Parkway. Exactly. Thank you. Um, Kathy decided to give copies to us here. Um, I don't think we need to comment on it presently. You probably know more about it than I do. At the southern end of the parkway, there was a um, something. There was a uh, ice house. Ice house. Yes. Okay. Um, demolition of buildings with historic significance. Well, there's a proposal to put in a development, and but it includes there... demolition of this old building. So I think they're asking that it be delayed or the Historical Commission mm -hmm. take a look at it before yeah, they I think continue the, with the The demolition. current proposal is just for residences and not for mixed use. Oh, is it? That's, oh. I think, what was mentioned in here. Where is the building? Which side of the, the hot parkway is it on? It's on the Pope Pond side. It what backs is? up to Pope Pond. Oh. Beautiful area. Okay, yes. Okay, thank you. And then... There was, on the Milton Times, that looks like front page, the proposed intersection at Chickatawba and Randolph mm -hmm. Ave. Yeah. That's bizarre. Um, 26 to 29,000 cars go through there mm -hmm. a day. I will say that we were all um, ensconce at about, on Route 3A in Situate, where five roads come together. And it's actually working. Is it working? It's a roundabout? Or yes, and it's it actually roundabout? working. It's yeah. surprising that it's working so Where well. Where is it? Is there bicycle use through there? Uh, the that you're talking about? Not much. Yeah, where it's, is it? It's 123, Route 123. Yeah. And Route 3A in yeah. situate. That's where 123 starts. Yeah. The thing that surprises me about this is that they show the bikes using the pedestrian sidewalks. Exactly. As a DOT presentation because. <laughs> <laughs> I, I You're supposed it. to know better. That's right. That's but right. anyway, it looks prettier, I guess. Right. That's all I have for additional business. Anything else? Don't think so. Motion to adjourn? So moved. All in favor? Aye. Good. Okay. Everybody get to sign these?